brought our selections meeting to order. It's uh, 6.31. Uh, it is a hybrid meeting, Zoom as well as in person. I'm going to ask that the uh, select board members that are present, uh, the board of selectmen members that are present uh, to identify themselves as selectmen Hull. Uh, good, good evening. Mr. Hull's president as well as Ken Pacheco. This is also a finance uh, committee meeting. And I'll, I'll call the finance committee meeting to order. Uh, you see here, say president. Catherine? Uh, Kevin? President. Peter? President. Robert? Robert here? President. Hey, Mr. Rendon, how are you tonight? I didn't see you on the screen. All right, so this is the continuation of our uh, budget hearings. Um, to the, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to, to make our recommendations and get us to within the um, proposed levy limit. Um, I know the town administrator has had some discussions with some departments as well as there were some uh, revisions submitted by uh, departments and as we go through the individual departments we will um, we can have some further discussion on them and then we will end by doing the um, special articles recommendations okay so um, if we can I think I saw the town accountant is he gonna drive the train or are you gonna drive it Mike? Uh, the town accountant is gonna drive the uh, spreadsheet train okay so Mr. Lavely you let uh, if you could share your screen hi Chris how are you tonight I'm going to ask first that we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Captain. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Captain. Thank you. Before we get into those, I just, Town Administrator, if you had any, or the Selectman have any opening comments before we get into our recommendations. I know you had some, but we'll do those on the individual budgets. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I can wait until. Yes, okay, that's okay. fine. I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Hall. All set. Okay, yes, thank sir. you. Anything from the committee before we get into the budgets? All set. Thanks. Okay, so Chris, if you can pull up the um, the excess the, the capacity sheet, you know my favorite one page. So this, this has been updated as of, I know it says departmental request 4721. This does not take into account the revised budget that the, I know the police chief submitted. Does it take into account any of those, Chris? And sorry, can you repeat? I had a hard time hearing you. I, I said, does, does the document um, take into account the budgets such as what the police chief submitted in the last, resubmitted in the last two days, and the taking out where we had the, uh, was it the sweeper that was in both places? Are those all? Um, I'm not sure if I've taken the sweeper out of both places yet. Ed. Let me check the um, street, uh, stormwater budget real quick. Because I just want to have an accurate. Uh, starting number. number. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So as I look at this, this I don't think it takes any of the police department we discussed last week and the change, the additional changes that the chief made. I'm just gonna. Okay, right now, uh, Ed. Right now, the the street sweeper is still in the operating budget request for stormwater 432. I'm gonna correct that now. How, how about the changes that we discussed last week and the resubmitted budget by the police chief? Because that was a significant reduction. Sorry, I'm having a, I'm, I'm really having a hard time hearing you. Ed. This is the microphone that's going to oh, for Zoom. Right. I'm going to How's that, better, Chris? Yeah, it's much better, thank okay. you. Okay, so the other question is, on the um, resubmitted police department budget that the chief submitted um, in the last couple of days that had all the ch changes from last week plus some additional reductions, has, is it, I'm assuming that's not included in this number either? No, it is now. It's reflected. So in the police department budget, everything is reflected as the chief has revised. So, so that on on that page one where it says four seventy two, that's an actual figure because that doesn't make any sense because we were at five forty last week, and we reduced a hundred and something from the police department, and then just fifty from the 
from the storm water. So, so if I could, Mr. Chair, and oh, actually, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but the police number, I believe, was skewed when the police department submitted, um, and when the police department submitted its updated spreadsheet, um, it, uh, the police department was using an outdated spreadsheet, and the outdated spreadsheet did not include the lieutenant position, and, and I think it's been the conversation so far that the lieutenant position uh, still was going to be in the budget uh, for, f for further consideration. So because that $92,000 was taken, or actually $99,000 was taken out, uh, like I think inadvertently, uh, like, it, uh, like it overly skewed Yeah, But I number. think that 99 was in there last week. It was, but then when, he, when, when the chief submitted his, um, his revised request, he was working from an old set of worksheets and it didn't include the lieutenant's salary in it at all. That's what happened. So I've had to go, I've had to go back, I've had to put it back in now so that it matches where, where we were a week ago. So the 472, as far as that, that net, that net of debt exclusion, uh, you know, the overcapacity, that number should be accurate now. Okay. All right, I have to have further discussion with him because that changes the discussion that I had with him this morning in regards to that because he really didn't reduce anything other than um, some of the uh, overtime from what he had, had reduced last week. So he really only took about 19, 20, 22, 25, about 30,000 is what he told me he was reducing, but. He added, to, honestly, Ed, if you look at, if we look at his budget right now. Yeah. Uh, based on what he submitted to me on Wednesday, yesterday, um, he added another $21,000 to the full-time salary line item. He went from, uh, so last week prior to this meeting. Yeah. Uh, full-time salaries, his re original request was a million and twenty-one thousand seventy-nine forty cents. He's added another, you know, he's brought it up another twenty-one thousand dollars. So in reality, he's only he's only cut nine thousand dollars out of his budget. Is he gonna be here tonight? No, as far as I know, not unless someone wants to reach out to him and tell him that there's some questions because the numbers that we talked last week weren't correct. I was assuming they, that the number that we had in there, because we had talked, when we talked last week, there was 133 coming out of there, and I was under the assumption, because it was on here, that the lieutenant number was in there. Yeah, I didn't know that there was a whole different set of so, numbers than that, that was in here. So uh, that, changes, that changes that discussion. So we're gonna have to wait on the police budget at some point. Um, so we'll start with the with the other ones and get through it. But okay. so our starting point as we sit today is four hundred seventy-two thousand over the levy limit. Correct. That's utilizing that's five, correct. That's utilizing five forty from ambulance. Yep. And that would be if we if we uh, submitted everything in full without utilizing uh, any other funds. I do have before we start, and I'd like to go to. Um, the receivables, the, the, what we have projected, because I think, I, I know we've talked about this because we took those other things out, but I, I, I also think that we've been a little bit really conservative on that number. So, Understood. So I'd like to, as we get closer, I'd like to have a further discussion on that, um, on uh, estimated receipts for next year. So, all right, so okay. as we, let, let's start with the first budget and we can make our recommendations. So, um, Chris, will you plug in the recommendations as we go through them or? I absolutely will. Okay. And then, uh, Peter, can you track like you always do as a secondary um, level to as we uh, go through it? Good. Okay. All right. So first up would be? Town meeting. Town meeting. So is there a motion to recommend? Uh, as requested for uh, account 113. Actually, you know what? We'll do it this way. We'll go through 
until, and, and we'll make a recommendation on budgets we don't have any recommended changes to, okay. to get them done in a lump. I know Chris will be a little slow for you to get them in there, but we'll do them as a lump. I'll just ask if there's a question on the budget. And if someone, if you can just track which ones we hold, yep. we'll get our recommendation of the, of the clean budgets first. Yep. And then we'll, and then we'll do the, the ones that we have to. So is there any question on 113? 114? 122 on the Board of Selectmen's the, budget? Um, no. 131. Another phone phone budget request. 132. I'm going to ask that we hold 132, that if we need to, something that we could fill back fill in October if we had to, um, that we uh, make a determination if we have to do the full 50 to start here just to see where we're at in the reserve fund. So I'm going to recommend that we hold uh, 132. So I'll entertain a motion to recommend as submitted up to uh, budget number 131, the finance committee budget. So moved. Is there a second? And did that include 124? Yes. Oh, uh, town administrator budget. I must have skipped right over that one. Is there any question on the town administrator requested budget? I missed this one, but the difference between uh, oh, the difference that the town administrator adjusted it since the department request and the TA recommend are different. Oh, is is the salary one twenty? So yeah, the salary is one twenty. One of the questions I just have for this process, based on uh, that same question, Mr. Chair, is if there are some there are some budgets. I like this one where the board of selectmen uh, and or the TA recommendation is lower than the departmental request, which uh, could be for good reason. Yeah. So this is one I, I missed that. Okay. Good catch, Peter. So we'll hold 120. We'll hold 124 as one that we'll have discussions. Okay. It's all and that those are the points. We'll hold yep. the ones that have a discrepancy. A difference. A, okay. A difference Perfect. and discrepancy. Okay. So Thank you. From, from the departmental request. So it would be a uh, recommendation as submitted on uh, budgets up to uh, where was I? 131 with the exception of 124. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed, the ayes have it. Oh, I have to do it on roll call, sorry. Mr. Perry? Aye. Mr. Rendon? Aye. Mr. Roach? Aye. Mr. Aye. And the chairman votes aye. I thought we have to do those that way. So, Mr. Chair, the chief is not able to join, but he asked me to call him. If I could just be excused, yeah, I can sure. try to get some yep. clarification. Yep. Uh, so we, someone tr is, uh, so someone's track, can someone just track the ones that we held since the town administrator? Tracking them now. You track, okay, thanks. So we finished at 132 as a hold, 135. So this is quite, I have a question to the board of selectmen and, and I, I think we need to hold this one until the, um, uh, town administrator comes back with our current town accountant leaving. What does that do to affect next year's budget? So um, we'll hold that one until the uh, yep. town administrator comes back. That's fine. Uh, one four, one forty. Oh, so I'm. I keep skipping around trying to. Sorry, at 141 should be next. Yeah, 141, the assessor's office. Probably should hold the uh, select board and the uh, TA have a different recommendation. Yep. And when I say select board, I mean board of selectmen. Yep. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, 
So hold the hold hold on the assessors for discussion. Um, hold the accountant for discussion with the town administrator. One forty-five. So um, I don't think did did uh, Chris did Mary resubmit with any sick time buyback for her pending? Yeah, she did. Yeah, she's at she she has about um. Eighteen thousand nine hundred dollars split between one forty-five and one forty-six. So, some of you remember last week I asked the treasurer collector on the sick time buyback line because she is planning on retiring at some point this year. And she had not put her um, her own buyback in, so she did update that based on the same formula that the uh, assessor was using on. Uh, on buyback so uh, that budget did increase from our recommendation so um, and I think that I'm, I'm assuming that the Board of Selectmen and, and uh, Town Administrator did not did not have a discussion on that we did so not have a discussion what is the new figure so the new figure would be a total departmental request on personnel expenses of ninety one thousand two twenty two eighty one And that's the only change, right, Chris? Correct. That's the only change to Mary's budget. So we'll hold that one for further discussion because I'd like to get input both on that one and the assessors from the um, Town of Board of Selectmen regarding yeah. sick time buybacks on, on, elect, on the elected personnel. Uh, Budget, uh, same thing, so that would be the same thing on the treasurer and collector line. The only change from the request is that sick time buyback. So we'll hold that one. Town council. So um, this budget has fluctuated. Um, it's It's been as low as 25. It's gone up to 50. I just want to, um, from a feeling from the Board of Selectmen on do they expect, I mean, this year, our actual expenditures through March were um, 38,000. Um, last year, we spent 30,000. The year before, we spent 22,000. What's your expectation for this year? And I know it's always a moving target, but in a year that every $10,000 counts. Um, and, yeah. and it's 11,000 through March. Right. Oh, it's 11,000, so there's 38,000 remaining. So uh, is this one that if we could take take some out now and if, if necessary, as we review it, um, you know, and free cash comes in, we can supplement. Yeah, I, I think in the past, we've actually, when we got tight, we've actually funded the entire budget out of uh, free cash. So, Mr. Hull, yep. Yeah, so um, I, I would recommend at this point that we recommend $30,000 based on the last two years history for um, town council. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yes. I'm That's not fine. sure if we want the town administrator to have some input on this, uh, but I'm okay with it. Is there a recommendation on the committee to make that motion on budget uh, 151? It's raising appropriate $50,000 for uh, professional technical. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. On discussion? Robert? Aye. Peter? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Kathy? Aye. And the chairman votes aye. All right, we cut 20. We cut 20. We're, we're getting closer. <laughs> Is it right $30,000 for that recommendation? Yeah, yeah, 30. That's correct. Thank Please. you. Thank you. <clears throat> One one fifty five looks good as as so uh, one fifty five. So uh, I would also uh, so um, recommend that uh, budget one fifty five as requested. Is there a motion? Because I, um, I have a question on 158. So is there second. a second on discussion? Mr. Randy? Aye. Mr. Roach? Aye. 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 
Chairman Votai. On 158, our last two years of expenditures have been three and four thousand dollars, and I know this is always a moving figure too. But I would recommend that we reduce that to uh, ten thousand dollars. And then that if we get into tax title that we need additional funds, that that can be requested at a later date. So there's a motion to recommend $10,000 in tax title 158. So moved. So moved. Second. On discussion? Catherine? Oh, um, hi. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Kevin? Aye. Peter? Aye. Robert? And the aye. And the chairman votes aye. Town clerk. Is there a motion to recommend? Uh, so there's no is there's no hold on 161, 162, 163. I went too far. So is there a motion to recommend 161, 162, and 163? So moved. Second. 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 On discussion? Kevin? Aye. Robert? Aye. Peter? Did we lose Mr. Roach? Catherine? Aye. And the chairman votes aye. 171, conservation. So there is a... So this is where you added the additional... 90... For, for yes. The, I added 9,500. There is the difference between the Board of Selectmen recommendation. That 9,500 I get, but the Board of Selectmen is... is an additional 500 lower. And if it said communication allowance? Do you know what that communication allowance is? It should, the communication allowance should be for uh, the conservation agent's cell phone. It should keep out of that budget. Okay, so it was just missed in the Board of Selectmen recommendation? Or it should be. I don't know that it was ever there to begin with. Yeah, I wouldn't, that should be in there, Mr. Chairman, as well. All right, so the number should be what the TA's recommendation is, which is... Seventy-one O twenty. Is that correct? Yeah. The, the other line item that's different right now is professional and technical. Somebody has cut ninety-five hundred. Or it, it did. The TA's recommendation is ninety-five hundred dollars too high. It's. Yeah. No. No. He he recommended that. He we spoke on that last week. That's his recommendation based on the additional funding that's going to be necessary for the two big projects going on in town with. Um, uh, Strawberry Hills. Yeah, stra Phil strawberry fields, fields, strawberry sorry. fields, and pine hills. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. So, so I would uh, accept a motion to uh, follow the, the TA's recommendation on the Conservation Commission budget. So moved. Is there a second? Second. On discussion. Second. Hearing none. Catherine. Aye. Peter. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Robert. Aye. And the chairman votes aye. Trails committee. We talked last week about the possibility of throwing this in with Park and Rec. Can that be done? Under park, uh, the, that the, the supplies be purchased through the Park and Rec for Trails Committee? 
Because it is part of, I would assume that trails, trails should fall under uh, Parks and Rec. So, so yes, and the trails, the only thing, the trails is a separate, the trails is a separately appointed committee. I did have a conversation uh, with the chairman um, of the trails committee who's actually on with us tonight. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't want to put words in Mr. Cavallo's mouth. I think he's open to working uh, with Parks and Rec, but I think um, at least right now the Trails Committee would, I think, prefer to have their own budget just based on their work and the track record that they've built so far. But How about, uh, Mr. Cavallo, are you here? Yes, okay. yeah, How are you tonight? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so I, I just had I have a question because I I think that this is another one of those committees that just can, is evolving. Um, are you yeah. okay, or will you be? Will you? I'm sure you you will you'll be willing. If we funded at the same level as what was expended in FY21 um, to start, and it, it would, the rest of it would be revisited after Trails has a, has time to meet with Parks and Rec and and talks about how you guys can work. Joint, in, a, in a joint effort with the trails and our parks and recs department, and we'll revisit the additional funding in the fall. So you're saying uh, uh, funding it the 588. Yeah, we'll fund it at 600. Yeah, and, then and if I may, yes, I don't know that the 58826 is accurate. I mean, maybe the chairman of the Dighton Trails Committee can tell me otherwise, but I think that expense has been misclassified. Um, no, that, that's right. Cause last that's year accurate. Okay. Lot. Yeah, because last year we didn't do a whole lot because of uh, the uh, pandemic, uh, but we had plans for doing doing more this this year. So if we find so, the 600, so there's a lot of things we'll be able to do. If you can share with us, because this is similar to when I think we had, can't remember which committee it was. Human that, rights. No, it wasn't even human rights. It was in, in the past, they came in and asked for $2,500, and we never actually saw the plan of what they were going to do. And I think that would help us to justify the funding we put against it if we see what what the money is going for. I know it's just a plan, but you know, in the past we've gotten requests for twenty five hundred or five thousand dollars, and they say, "What are you going to do with it?" Mm -hmm. Well, we're just going to do a mail it. Well, what does that mean? So that's why I ask that if we if we if we fund it for the beginning of the year with the same expenditure that you had in the current fiscal year. And give you a chance to develop that and figure that out. I know another summer is going to go by, but we, um, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, if you sat through this, it's a really tight budget cycle as it is. And I know, you know, 2,500 versus 19, uh, versus 600 is not, you know, in a, in a $24 million budget, people go, well, it's only $1,900. But as I said earlier tonight, every $1,900 helps. <laughs> so for us to get to where we need to be, so. Mr. Minister? So, so yeah, just, just actually to clarify, the Trails Committee, they did submit a budget proposal yeah. for that 2500 and uh, in the committee's packet, I think last week, when the Trails Committee budget was discussed, it was in the packet. Okay. Um, uh, I, I just want to clarify, they were yeah. very diligent yeah. in getting something to us. Oh, that's fine. Mr. Schwartz? Uh, I hear about the cuts. The only thing I, I have from the limited knowledge I have of the Trails Committee is that they're working on some grants. And will that impede if there's any matching funds that are necessary? That's the only question. Yeah, I have. I'm not sure. If you want to, I don't know, Mr. Kamala, can you answer that question? Yeah, the, the funding request for uh, FY22 did not include working on grants. Uh, that was actually uh, some other work uh, ongoing, but. Uh, this this was actually for a, a, a pair of trail kiosks and uh, trail treatments for existing trails in town. Uh, so if we uh, if, if we don't fund a twenty five hundred, if we're talking about revisiting, I, I'd like to know what that means. Uh, but if you look at my proposal that uh, Mr. Mullen said was in the packet last week, uh, we we have it uh, broken down by line item, and okay. uh, each one of those trail signs uh, is we're looking at two two of the trail kiosks kiosks like we have down in Broad Cove. Uh, we're looking at uh, making two more of those, and that's done through the high school. 
Yeah. And uh, the reason the reason our expenditures were so low last year is because the kids weren't in in shop, so they couldn't build anything for us. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we would have built this last year with our request from last year. So just as a, as a um, FYI, so those of you who are new to the whole budget process is we build this budget in the fall budget that's vote the spring budget that, that is voted on at town meeting is technically a preliminary budget until it gets finalized at fall um, special town meeting. So we work towards a number. We technically don't have final numbers from the state. We don't have our final receivables in. Um, so we, we work towards a number based on the information that we have in front of us. And when we say we're gonna revisit, it's before we finalize the budget at the uh, fall town meeting. And I know Mr. Smith, you wanna speak, but uh, just, uh, give me one second and I will, uh, I will give you the floor. Um, the magic of Zoom. Um, but so uh, just so everybody understands from a budgeting process that really the, the budget we vote on at annual town meeting is the preliminary budget. And when we say we we'll revisit it in the fall, it's because the final budget is not completed until the October slash November um, meeting. Got it. Okay. Understood. Thank, thanks, Tim. Um, Mr. Smith? Go on mute, Kevin. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to touch on this real briefly with the relationship of the Dighton Trails and the Dighton Parks and Rec um, Commission. We currently don't have any actual um, connection. I believe, from what I'm, what I understand, that everything that the Dighton Trails has done actually doesn't fall under our commission's, um, you know, areas of interest. Um, I've been meaning to reach out to Mr. Cavallo to, you know, kind of open up lines of communication and I can't say whether or not that that's going to happen in the future or you know a collaboration happens in the future hopefully it does um but as far as from a budget standpoint um which when we get to parks and rec you see we tried to do some things to make some cuts so I don't think that we would want to absorb you know that his amount into ours without having a discussion about it okay so th thank you Mr. Smith so I have a question Mr. Cavallo because I think you just mentioned that things weren't done. Did we actually have a budget for trails in 2021? We were. We submitted a budget request for FY21, but because we were a brand new committee, uh, the board of selectmen uh, elected to keep us under their budget. So it, we were kind of masked behind them. This is the first fiscal year where we were set up with our own uh, department number. Um, so this, that's why you probably haven't seen it. Okay, hold on. I, I'm just going to go back to the to the board of selectmen. I think it was a I think it was a thousand dollars then. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, so uh, Ed, if I may. Yeah. Um, on, on on the um, on the screen there, there's five hundred eighty-eight dollars being spent in fiscal twenty-one against the Dighton Trails Committee Department line item. What I meant by misclassified, those expenses need to be moved to the selectmen's budget to the line item in their budget. Fifty-three, which was fifty-three forty-three, but if I look at fifty-three forty-three in the board of selectmen's budget which is Dighton Trails Committee, there's no funding. Because it's been moved over. There was, there was no budget in FY21. So that's why I'm trying to come up with, the, with, with what the baseline was for this year. Mm -hmm. um, so, Mr. Cavallo, do you know what that budget was? In the selectmen's Actually, budget, I'm not, sure, and I'm not sure I agree with that right now. That's all right. I'll I'll check this out for the committee uh, shortly. Okay. So, at this point, so, um, Mr. Cavallo, if we if we budgeted at a thousand dollars with a commitment to revisit it before we close out the fall, will that get you guys started? Yes, sir. Okay. Right now I gotta find out where I was. There it is. 174. 174. So is there a motion to recommend a thousand dollars for the budget number 174 Trails Committee? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, Catherine? Aye. Robert? Aye. Peter? 
Kevin? Aye. Chairman votes aye. Thank you, Mr. Cavallo. Thank you, Mr. Smith, for your input. Hi, uh, can I just uh, give you one, one piece of information from last year on, sure. on January? Sorry, I was, look, I was looking it up on my computer while you were, you were talking. On January 29, 2020, uh, we put a budget request in for the Trails Committee for $3,900. And that's when um, the Board of Selectmen just said we'll absorb this in our budget because we didn't uh, we didn't have a separate accounting. So and with a request of 3,900 uh, when the pandemic and all, all of our activities that were brought to a screeching halt, uh, that's why we obviously only spent about $600. Okay. So that's just a, so, just as a oh, so there was a budget request of 3,900 for the last fiscal year's budget that never made it never made it to, never never made it to us because the the board of selectmen put it in their budget. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank thank you. We're, we're head, to, to, just take it this way. Time. We're headed in the right direction now, Jeff. All right, thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks for your time. No problem, thanks. Yeah. Uh, planning board. I would... Uh, so um, just from, uh, I'll just, I'll change it myself. So uh, on, the, on the planning board, as we have stated to the committees many times, that we are not looking at increases in stipends to uh, appointed and elected officials. So, which I don't think the TA or the, um, um, board of selectmen. or the Board of Selectmen, thank you. Uh, had in their recommendation. So, if I'm correct. And they're now sharing the office manager with the ZBA. So, on this budget, the, the, num the number that the TA and Board of Selectmen recommendation reflects the, sh the sharing of the yes. employee and the reduction of the 2% on the elected officials? Yes, yes is that correct? Okay. Yes, it does. Okay, so uh, we're on budget 175, I would uh, recommend that we um, vote to recommend the TA and Board of Selectmen recommendations on the departmental request. So moved. Is there a second? Uh, on discussion? Robert? Aye. Peter? Kevin? Aye. Catherine? Aye. And Chairman votes aye. Yeah, just really quick, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Uh, Chris Lavalier, you just actually decreased the... I did it. Oh, okay. The departmental request. Yeah, I did, okay. I did, I did it. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. That's... I, was ma I, was, I was doing the math that way, so okay, I Okay, perfect. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That, was my, that was my bad. You don't, you don't see my color on there? What's it? Sorry, I didn't know your color, yeah. <laughs> what your color was. I was just trying to match up to where you guys were. Yep, that's perfect. So, ZBA. I know this is getting a little tedious, but I'm trying to li minimize the holds. This all lines up. Yeah, I'm just looking at actuals on professional technical from previous years to see what the average was. Now, um, what is the new travel line that's in there for? Um, DBA. It, it, was, it was in last year's budget too, but they haven't spent anything out of that line for two years now. The only thing I can think of, Mr. Chair, is any uh, travel reimbursements for any office staff for any site visits. But based on the shared 
staff. Um, and we typically don't do travel reimbursements either for staff as well. So based on that and the subscription line that they haven't spent, and it's not mm -hmm. a lot, I'm gonna, uh, I would recommend that we reduce the Zoning Board of Appeals by um, $500 split between 5710 and 5730. And what's that new figure? Um, please hold, I'm sorry. Since I'm allowed to play in the system too. It would change the expense line to 11,950, the salary line to 28,611.15, making the new total 11,000, oh, sorry, 40,561.15. Just really quick, Mr. Chair, that doesn't look like it's picking up the formula there, Chris. That yeah, it does. Uh, I know the bottom line is still the same though across the board. No, the I see uh, as I see it, the select the TA and selectman recommendation is forty one oh sixty one. Yeah, but the subtotal, but the department total doesn't reflect forty five sixty one. Forty five sixty one. Yeah, we just I mean the departmental request was just lowered by five hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'll shut up now. That's okay. <laughs> is, there, is there a motion to recommend uh, Department 176 at a total of 40,561.15, uh, 286,115 in uh, personnel expenses on 11,950 in uh, operating expenses? Moved. Is there a second? Second. Peter? Aye. Robert? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Chairman votes aye. Agricultural Commission. So, can anyone explain um, is this a new is this a new budget request at 2515 or what where the 2515 is going? I, I do not have any information um, from the Agricultural Commission. Um, as you can see, this looks like a level funded request from last year, but they also have not spent anything in FY21 to date. I know this is an active committee but they haven't spent any of the appropriation. The Board of Selectmen have anything on the Agricultural Commission? No, I, I know that they're involved with the uh, community garden that's gonna start in the fall next door at the James Briggs, but I'm not sure where it would fall under here. But it is, uh, it's a relatively new com uh, commission. It's only maybe been a couple of years, uh, but they haven't, as you, as you note, they haven't spent anything thus far for this fiscal year. I don't know what the replacement equipment would be, but uh, I'm going to recommend that we uh, fund this at a thousand dollars, and then if they start to become active, they can come back and ask again in the fall. Um, and that, so that would change. Uh, leave fifty-three hundred at the hundred and thirty, and that leaves what, and then reduce. Um, we do. I just don't know what they'd be spending on. So, so it's eight seventy left. Yeah. So it'd be uh, four thirty five in each of the other two lines. You got that, Chris? Sorry, say that. So oh, we, sorry, I lost somebody so speaking. I lost it. The the recommendation would be, um, unless any member of the finance committee has anything different, the recommendation would be one hundred and thirty dollars in professional and technical. 435 in 5340 community communications and 435 in replacement equipment bringing it to okay, a total it. bringing it to a total of a thousand dollars is there is that in the form of a motion anyone on the committee so moved is there a second, second. on discussion hearing none all those in favor all those opposed the ayes have it 
Oh, sorry, I have to call the name. Sorry, the Kevin. Ka Aye. Catherine. <laughs> Kevin. Aye. Robert. Aye. Peter. Aye. The chairman says aye. I can't wait till we can do this. Everybody in the same room. <laughs> I thought it was staying like this. Uh, I, had, I thought it was going to stay like this. I know. I, it, no, it's not. <laughs> no, we're getting closer. No, no. Getting closer, although one member of my family was tested positive today, so. Oh, no. Move. <laughs> not me. Yeah, but you might... not, not in my not living in my household either. Good, good. I was going to tell you. No, no, not living in my household. I was going to suggest you move. <laughs> Someone I haven't had contact with in a month. Oh. No. Public uh, public buildings. It's only a but. So what is the. Oh, this, this is where the town administrator, our, our housekeeping is different from what the department request was originally? Uh, yes, uh, there are two things. Number one, are uh, the increase um, on the housekeeping supplies. And also in the last I line item, you'll see that after the departmental request and 5871, there was a shared equipment line item uh, that was added. Um, we had a $5,000 offset from the board of collecting budget. And then the other um, $6,700, actually, the planning board has, um, uh, they've utilized all the funding in a special warrant article. So, so I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. I was just going to ask, uh, I believe we might have brought this up last time, but is some of this expense... Um, Escalated because of the COVID and the products that we're having to use now. In addition, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, and so, the frequency of the cleaning as well. Right. My secondary question to that would be: Is there any um, money that is available from from the state um, under the COVID, uh, the the uh, CARES Act? So, so yes, we have been continuing to seek reimbursements from the state uh, to help to fund and to offset these costs. Um, right. And we'll continue to do that. Um, the, oh, and as we go through the year and receive uh, those reimbursements, uh, you know, those yeah. reimbursements can be used to offset these costs. The right. challenge we have going into FY22 however, is, is the CARES Act funding is set to expire at the, at the end of the calendar year. Right. So, so and this is more of the, a question to the accountant, similar to snow removal, items that are being offset by CARES, are we allowed to deficit spend in, in anticipation of CARES Act's reimbursement? Yes, we are. So... Because as I look at this, every time we take, we, we make a cut in something else in the departmental request to get us closer to the, to the levy limit, we go to another department that has an increase mm -hmm. from where the original departmental request is, so we're making no headway. So that's why I asked that question. So in, in that, um, I do have further question on the additional $5,000 on the shared equipment over and above the offset from the Board of Selectmen's office, that why the, um, there is no special article to reimburse that um, because we, we were setting us up, and especially in an item like this, that we, I guess we could use some free cash for it. And then can we bring the custodial and housekeeping back to the 12,000? We re review it um, again in the fall, but be, knowing full well, we're probably going to deficit spend. If we're getting reimbursements out of it, we can look at what that reimbursement was until October and say, we need to put an additional 4,000 back in here. The only question I have is for the accountant actually as well, because we need to put the custodial contract out to bid and uh, to the town account, when we enter into a contract, usually 
we need to certify that the money uh, is the, uh, to fund the contract is there and has been appropriated. And I just have a question. With the CARES Act, are we able to uh, say, uh, enter into a contract with uh, funding for services that some of the funding we don't technically we wouldn't technically have at that point. Do you know what I mean, Chris? I know what you mean. And I, I, I think the safest, the most conservative approach, Mike, would be to take the approach that you have, appropriate the money in the account to make sure that we can fund the contract, oh. assuming that with the assumption that CARES isn't going to give us any money back. I, I'm, I'm going to take a different approach, Chris. I'm going to say we have the benefit of we do keep thirty to $50,000 in a reserve account. Mm -hmm. And this is in, in the past when things like this that we've had to reduce it at annual, we, we've been able to backfill if necessary in the fall. Even if we've spent, okay. you know, reserve account funds up until November, we have in the past um, backfilled our reserve account in October with additional uh, raise and appropriate because we've spent, because we normally don't spend that whole thirty to fifty thousand dollars in the reserve account. It's there for things like this and then if we have to backfill it in the fall that's what we do so I, I would recommend that we put that at the departmental request number and then um i, I still don't understand the shared equipment piece okay. if you can just yep so so from what i understand that that eleven thousand is funded by that eleven thousand seven hundred is funded by five thousand uh, that came out of the Board of Selectmen budget. Okay. Then additionally, sometime, as I understand, in the last two years, there was a special warrant article for a copier for the planning board. Correct. That funded the, uh, the lease or whatever happened uh, like, of that copier. The, uh, that uh, article was one time only we have a recurring operational cost and and a conversation I believe before I arrived was to create a shared equipment ride item to fund it from five with five thousand from the selectmen's budget and to fund the difference to raise an appropriate. Right, so if I go back to the selectmen's budget right now, the five thousand was in an original Departmental, departmental request. request. Yes. Okay. So yes. this is not the 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 new part of it is sixty seven hundred. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, and you can see that. Um, to, to, to. Chris, were you just showing the? Yeah. Sorry. Let me go back to the selectmen's budget for a second. This line item here. You you can see where we took that out. Line item fifty-eight seventy. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, do we take it out of our budget? And put it into this budget. Yes, that five thousand. So it isn't. It's eleven thousand seven hundred then. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, do we have as far as building repairs go? I probably missed this part of it, but uh, where we've got two thirds of it left to spend over these three months, is, is there any room to maneuver that eleven seven in there? So, so is, is, is Jim seven hundred even? So I, I, my, that's a good question, Pete, because I, I, I had a similar question where we still have the, the renovations money set aside that will go towards some of our repairs that are going on in town, in town hall. Is there any room for us to, you know, grab the, some of that additional <clears throat> 6,700 that's going in to get us closer to what the original request of 169 was? the entire budget so if we if we took the the 
was it 4,000 on um, the housekeeping line and took 5,000 from the um, building repair and maintenance account to start with. Then we're at um, 175 instead of 184, which is, you know, we'll absor try and absorb the other five and the other six into the budget for now. Is that the, along the lines you were talking, Pete? So I would I would agree on that, and then you know if we that the, you know town that that's a moving target on the the, the building repair, and, and I think we're all in agreement over the time over years that uh, that is not a line that we want to you know if we let our buildings go, we it, it makes it double the cost later on, but. Um, we're, we're just trying to get to a point where we can be at. So I would make a recommendation that we reduce line, the recommendation, the requested on line 5250 to um, 35,000. And on, of course my computer just went out, and that the uh, line 5450 remain at um, 12,000. Uh, based on the department request, and that we add the additional eleven thousand seven hundred. Is, is that what that contract is on that shared printer? Is eleven thousand seven hundred dollars a year? Because I know we talked about that um, piece of equipment when they bought it, and what did that include? Mm -hmm. That uh, I don't, it was never shared with us that it was going to be twelve thousand dollars a year in, in in maintenance of that shared equipment. So that, is that what the contract is? And what did we pay for that printer? For, it to, for the service to be $12,000 a year? Uh, to be honest with you, I, that was a number uh, that, was, that was indicated to me by Ms. Brady in our office. So like she uh, was involved in I, all that, so I took that number to be a solid number. All right, I think we need more information on on that one. Yep. Um, I just think that sounds awful high for servicing of 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 the uh, copies and printers that we have in the in the building. I mean, a thousand dollars a month for copier services. I and I'm not familiar with it because I don't. You know, I used to be when my father was in that business, but so there would be one, at least. One, two, three of them in the town hall built. Yeah, uh, sounds awful high for for because uh, it's not the supplies. It, it uh, mm -hmm. as I'm told, it's for service servicing the equipment. The, the equipment. Yep. Um, I can follow up on that too. Okay. Just make sure that number is accurate and how it got that high. Okay. Yeah. Any questions on any questions on that? Well, quite honestly, Ed, I thought there was another line carried somewhere else that already covered the maintenance. Maybe we'll come across it when we're doing the budget. Yeah, well, that I, was the, that I guess I guess they didn't have a line in the planning board, but it was it was a special article, Kevin. And, yeah. And the special article ended. There's not any money left in it. And yeah. And the um, uh, and five thousand of it was carried in the board of selectmen's budget that was moved over. But I understand that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't no, think I, I understand. Yeah, let's go to the, where what what number is the planning board budget? One seventy five. Let's just take a look again in there, Kevin. Yeah, there's nothing in the planning board budget. No. No. That's the only other place I think it would be because that's where the they were the ones that were the original article for, for that, for, yeah, for that big printer thing that that they this, that they had. Yeah, this is the big printer that they can print the the, the plotting and, on yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So just for well, so so we can get a recommendation on the on the table yeah. on that one. Um, yep. Uh, until someone tells us different, I'm gonna and we can make an adjustment later if we have to. I'd like to also reduce that rec request to ten thousand dollars. So, the the what what 
number is that budget? 5871. No, the, the actual budget itself was 192. Thank you. We haven't even got to the 200 yet. So, um, the, so I make, so that would be, um, Oops, I put a hundred thousand in there. That would not be good. That on this one though, the formula did not change based on the when I plugged it in. I'm just trying to figure out what the number is. And I've got a total of one seventy four one hundred dollars. Uh, I have a new total of one sixty four one hundred because I just reduced the. Uh, the um, non-energy, uh, the building maintenance from uh, requested forty to thirty-five. Yeah, the formula, the formula in the departmental request is wrong right now. So the one sixty-four one hundred is not correct. That's not correct. Yeah, that formula is bad. I'm fixing it now. I'll take the one sixty-four though. <laughs> Yeah, 174, 100 is correct right now. Okay, so we're within 5,000 of what the original request was. So I would, um, I would make a recommendation to recommend building uh, department budget 192 as reflected on the screen currently at 174, 100 total expenses. So moved. Is there a second? Aye. On discussion? Peter? Aye. Robert? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Catherine? Aye. And the chairman votes aye. Soon we'll get to some easy ones. <laughs> so, Chris, do you know on, on building insurance as of 331, is that the total we paid this year, 41309, or is there anything outstanding in the fourth quarter? I, I have no, I, I don't pay that bill. Um, that, that bill probably goes through uh, the selectman's office, um, but that, that's probably insurance for the whole year right now. That's, that's the whole year. Do you have a final uh, number from our insurance agent for uh, FY22? I will ask Karen right now. Because if it's, if it's, you know, even if we can grab 5,000 out of there, that offsets what we just did in the... Uh, we typically leave a little bit of a buffer there because our policies are being rewritten as we speak. Yep. And uh, literally as we speak, so I don't want to go too low, <coughs> but um, Because if it was 41309 last year, and if even if it goes up, you know, 10%, it's still in a, it's around 45, and I don't think it's going to go up 10%. So I think that the only thing, if we pay that at the beginning of the year, um, to Okay. I think that's probably what we do. So I, just if we run short, we won't be able to pay the bill. Oh, in another case, we could wait. Oh, we'll have a reserve yep. transfer to pay the bill, but. that uh, Karen would know that yes I'm asking her as we speak yes right after July 1st we pay the bill okay for all of our insurances is that that's the only challenge here we're in a like an in-between spot yeah 
But she doesn't have the quote back from? No. From, okay. All right. Based on historical, mm -hmm. at this point, I'm going to recommend uh, $45,000 on 193 building insurance. So moved. Is there a second? Second. On discussion? Peter? Aye. Robert? Aye. Catherine? Aye. And the chairman votes aye. I vote aye as well. Oh, did I not call on you? Did I forget you? I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay, if I just make sure. No, no worries. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I rec. Uh, let's see. Another question for Karen on the so town, re town reports. Do we? The reason why we haven't spent any as of yet is because the town reports are going to print on Monday. Okay. So I'm just looking at what it cost us mm -hmm. each of the last two years. Can we take 500 bucks out of there and put it at 2,000? I don't see a problem with that. Okay. Uh, account number 195 recommend uh, $2,000 on the 5,300 professional and technical. So moved. Is there a second? Second. On discussion? Catherine? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Robert? Peter? Sorry, that was an eye for me. Okay. Peter? And the, aye. And the chairman will tie. 210, police. So did the police chief not able to have a discussion with us? So uh, we're going to have to hold this one. We'll do a Zoom meeting. So I did speak with the police chief. Yep. And um, he, uh, you know, conveyed to him that in his in his updated spreadsheet uh the the salary of uh, the proposed salary for the lieutenant was not actually included and that uh, completely skewed the earlier number um what he wanted me to point out just for everyone's edification that he did make a number of cuts to get up to um thirty thousand dollars in savings um one of them is in the overtime account. Um, he cut a ten thousand. He proposed cutting ten thousand dollars from his original, from his re original request. He cut. Um, so it's hard to see because we've overridden, I think, the originals. But um, a tuition allowance was cut. Yeah, it's right there. Um, Vehicle supplies um, and gas and fuels. So. Mike, he also cut the reserve officer line item by yes. nine grand. Okay. So what is included? So the additional officer was not included in the recommendation of the board of selectmen. Is that correct? That, that's it was not. Okay. I was just trying to figure out what the biggest difference was yes. between the two. So sorry, go ahead. I, I'd like to give the chief an opportunity to come before we finalize this. So maybe we'll do a, a Zoom meeting uh, next week mm -hmm. on Tuesday to, to finish, finish. Because yep. um, I had had to, and, and I was working off of the numbers that we originally had when I had my discussions with him. So we, we have to have a further discussion because we can't absorb a 14% increase. And, and we just, there's no... You know, two hundred thousand dollars is is, is is we just there's no way to find that um, additionally from um, from where we're at. So let's see where we are at at the end of at the end of these, and then we'll revisit the police. Is everyone good with that? Yeah. Because yeah, because I I know I know he he makes a good argument for it, but we have to. Um, you know, we got to get on the same page with the numbers. And I know, so, so Chris, that 1716 number, that was included in the 473 over the levy limit at the beginning when we discussed, when we talked earlier tonight, correct? Correct. Yeah. The 1716. Okay. All right. Thank you. You guys good with, with holding that one until we can have further discussion with the chief and we get through to see where we're truly at at the end of the night? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Two fifteen communications. Yes. 
I would recommend that uh, 215 as as uh, be f be uh, funded as requested. So moved. Is there a second? Second. On discussion. Second. Robert. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Catherine. Aye. Peter. Aye. And the chairman votes aye. Two twenty. Chief, you're gonna need all that vacation sick buyback, you think? Yeah. We're scraping. I said we're scraping. I mean, because that, that's the biggest jump in, in the budget is the vacation sick buyback, so. Okay. And that, so that's a retirement? Yeah. And, the, and what's the expected retirement date? Uh, January 1. January 1. That's the exact total as of right now. Okay. All right, is there a motion to recommend fire budget 220 as uh, requested by the chief? No move. Is there a second? Second. second. On discussion? Second. Catherine? Aye. Robert? Aye. Peter? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Chairman votes aye. Ambulance. So that was only half, right? Is there a motion to recommend uh, the ambulance budget 231 as requested by the chief? Is there a second? Anybody? Aye. <laughs> Peter, you're seconding it, Peter? Yeah. Okay. Uh, on discussion, Robert? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Peter? Aye. Ch Chairman votes aye. Building inspector. So, Chief, actually, before we finish on yours, when we go back to the revenues after, you're, you're, you're okay based on what's been coming in in revenue that we use the same number we used last year? Correct. I, okay. I don't believe that um, it's sustainable for long term. To come, but I think for this year we'll be all set. Okay. But we definitely need So, so we're, the the plan is based on that first page. We'll be using five hundred and forty thousand dollars from the ambulance fund. Based on that, Chris, can you at some point just give us an update of the projected balance after we use that five forty? Or do you have that, Chief? Um, yeah, I can give. Yeah, once we get April uh, receipts, I can give you an update. Okay. All right. The projection for June thirty twenty twenty one is eight sixty nine five twenty four ten. All right, so it'll leave about three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in there based on current projections. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. That helps. It's good that we're still leaving about three hundred, three hundred and fifty in there. I think that's always been our goal. Same thing on free cash is to leave a little bit in there at the end. So, thanks, Chief. Building inspector. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. You want to do all the? Do you want to do all the inspection budgets as a as a single vote? 
Yep, just taking a look at them individually and we can do that. All right, no worries. So that'd be 241, 242, 243. Ooh, hold on. 245. Uh, one, uh, going back, for some reason these budgets have uh, like actually changed from what what is initially proposed uh, like in each of the i'm um, in each of the gas plumbing and electrical um and i believe one more the uh, the total bottom lines were the same uh but there was an offset uh, for the permit in education that has somehow disappeared yes So the total bottom line is the same. It's but still eight thousand dollars, but it's just not broken out. Yes. So I I think for our purposes it doesn't matter because we don't vote as line items. Yes. We vote as as yeah. salary yep. and operating. Yep. So as long as it doesn't change the bottom line between a personnel expense and a operating expense, because yep. you can't, then, that's then that's fine. So am I correct that 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 if we voted as is the total as bottom line? Total yes, bottom. Okay. Yeah, if you vote bottom line, you'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I would recommend 241, 242, 243, and 245 as um, as requested. The only difference in the, the overall building, so in 241, there is about a $400 or $500 difference in what the departmental request was. In which one? 241. I thought I looked at it and they were the same number. What I show in here, the TA, the 38130 is the, re oh, seven, oh yeah, there is a. $100 difference. No, more than that. Yeah, there is. So yeah, four hundred. Yep. What? It's the yeah, there's a higher number in the. Right there. Yeah. So Chris, what is the difference in that? Because it's a higher number than what the department request was. I'm not sure why why it's different. The different uh, total difference looks like it's five hundred bucks. Yeah. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred. Four hundred dollars. Sorry, excuse me. So we're going to follow the department request at the lower number. So on those budgets, 241, 242, 243, 245, that uh, we recommend the departmental request. So moved. Is there a second? Aye. On discussion? Catherine? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Peter? Aye. Robert? Moving along, animal control. Um, actually, uh, Mr. Chairman, you might want to go back to Department 244, which is weights and measures. Okay. There's no, no change in the budget from last year to this year. It's level funded. They end up spending everything in the fourth quarter. I don't. Know if they spent. I mean, they spent, They only spent twelve hundred dollars last year. Um, I assume that he gets paid annually, which means he won't get paid until June this year, Peter. Okay, but they didn't spend the other three hundred and seventy dollars. Correct. They didn't spend it. They didn't spend a dime at three hundred seventy dollars last year, and they haven't spent anything now. All right. Well, leave it as is, and if you can just get back to us Tuesday when we get go over the police department, we'll make a an adjusted recommendation if necessary. If they're going to spend any of those 
professional, technical, travel, dues, subscriptions? Because they didn't have that, that was new in their budget last year at their request. Uh, that I, that's my recollection. Yeah. So if we can ask the building inspector to just address yeah, that. Yeah, because there were no expenditures in the prior two fiscal yeah. years. So I'm sure that those were just added last year as a request. Yep. All right, let's try and start to. So 292. Two ninety two, no questions on two ninety two to two ninety five. Um, ninety four forestry. Oh, did I skip that one? Yeah. Okay. And a question on two ninety two. Yeah. I last year they we talked about I think it was for chips. And I'm wondering if that's in the animal health and welfare and that, and if maybe we didn't use those, and that's why there's nothing really been. Do you have any on that, Ken, you know, that, that was pretty right. I think we bought a bunch of chips. We were chipping the dogs and the cats as they, as they came in. Anything on that? I, I don't know because you're right. We've only spent five hundred dollars out of three thousand that we budgeted. I, the prior years on animal health and welfare were worth three to four thousand dollars, but I don't know if it's maybe because we uh, we we opened the the shelter that we don't. Tom, do you have any insight in that at all? Okay, so Peter, what we'll do is we'll, we'll leave it as, as recommended and we can revisit that one on Tuesday. We'll have the okay. town, town administrator, if you can look into that on um, line 5300, animal health and welfare, that we've only spent 500 this year. You know, what, what's changed that we're not spending that three mm -hmm. to $4,000 we've been spending in the past? Now, is that, is that the rabies clinic that we know? Because that's coming up. Is that how we fund the rabies clinic? Could be. Could be. I think it's coming up. Yeah, could be. Did you hear that, Pete? It could yeah. be. It could be the rabies clinic. All right. So, any more questions on two ninety two through two ninety five? So I would entertain a motion as, rec as recommended uh, in the departmental request for 292 through 295. Is there a second? Second. On discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, all those opposed, the ayes. Have oh, sorry, I forgot again. <laughs> Kevin? Aye. Robert? Aye. Peter? Aye. Catherine? Aye. And the chairman votes aye. <clears throat> 299 emergency preparedness motion as requested by departmental on budget 299 second second on discussion uh, peter aye Catherine. aye robert aye kevin aye Three hundred. So this twelve million three seventeen two ninety one seventy six reflects exactly the requests of Bristol Plymouth, Bristol Aggie with capital and operating, and Dyton Rojo with capital and operating. Correct, Chris? That's correct. Um, Mr. Administrator, we'll vote it as a single number recommendation here, but in our motion, we'll, ha we'll have it all split out during okay. annual town meeting. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Just a point of clarification, too, that $9 is added into I, the... 
I see that. So it's a, it's correct in the departmental request yes. line. Thank yes. you. So is there a recommendation to put on account 300 of twelve million three hundred seventeen thousand two hundred ninety one dollars and seventy six cents for the funding of Dighton Rehoboth Regional High School, a regional school district. Sorry, Bristol County Agricultural and Bristol Plymouth. Anyone? Yeah. Yes, Kevin. Did I did I miss something? I must be overlooking something because the TAA recommendations. Did you just explain that? And I missed it. The, Being that they're different. So, Mike, that the TA recommendation of the board of selectmen recommendation includes the um, the ES the ESR two money. So, okay. So they, 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 the um, the the reduced request there at the at the TA recommendation level. Would be accurate based on the fact that we're gonna we're gonna get offset. No, Mike saying no. No, Mike saying no. Uh, no, the difference is um, so when DIA made their initial request, uh, they weren't actually at that time in late February, as I understand it. They weren't planning. They were planning on having less uh, Eccleston deficiency available to uh, to apply to the assessment. Uh, what the difference is, is they had um, actually additional uh, excess and deficiency funding, I believe in transportation, um, that they were able to apply to the assessment rate. So uh, that is, uh, that explains that difference, but almost an identical number, the 67,340, I believe, from the ESSA funds, that is what's included in receivables. Yes, in the revenue. In the revenue. Yes. So, so the number we should be voting on is twelve two five two seven zero five, not twelve three one seven. Yes. Oh, that's good. It's sixty thousand dollars. All right. So yeah. I will change my recommendation to twelve million two hundred fifty-two thousand seven hundred five dollars and seventy-six cents to fund the Dighton Rehoboth Regional School District, Bristol County Agricultural School, and Bristol Plymouth. So moved. Is there a second? On discussion, everybody gets that that this is the they, the assessment was changed from the original departmental request of the school district down by sixty thousand dollars from where it originally was, which we will yeah. definitely take. Yep. Even though there's an extra two sixty that we didn't fund last year, but that's a whole other story. So, um, sorry. Uh, on discussion, all those in favor, Kevin. Aye. Peter. Aye. Robert. Aye. Catherine? Aye. And the chairman votes aye. Well, that helps the bottom line. Yep. I know, Pete, I haven't asked you what that number is all the way through yet, but it's, uh, it's not 473,000, I can tell you that. Nope. <laughs> Before school, it was 435,031. Before school? Yeah. Oh, so, so it's under 400 now? Okay. Yeah. And I know there's another 35 as we get closer to the back, so. Highway. So department, what is num what's the number on highway? Uh, 422 at Thank you. On four to, any, any questions on 422 outside of the department request and recommendations as they are identical? Snow and ice, we're going to keep at 50. Is that what we put it at? Trying to get all of yours in one shot, Tom. Bridge, so 429. All right, let's, so let's do those before we do stormwater. So is it a, a motion to recommend highway, for, also 423 and 429 as requested, as the, requested by the department? So moved. Is there a second? Second. On discussion? Catherine? Aye. Peter? Aye. Robert? Kevin? Aye. Chairman votes aye. Stormwater, which is 432. Oh, oh, no mind. Oh, 
so this is the, so the, the correct number is, what, what is, what is the, the right number taking the 50 so right out there? That, that's the two subtracted fifty thousand five sixty two out of the rentals and lease line item line item fifty two seventy. Okay, so it's two, LB, two, LB two, takes two, care two, of two, All right, so it's two twenty nine, eight fifty five forty three for the total. That's correct. Okay. I was hoping there was another fifty. Yeah, grand. me too, but it's not. So that fifty thousand five sixty two has already been removed from the original four seventy three that we were looking at tonight. Right, Chris? That's correct. Okay, okay. So is there a uh, motion to recommend um, budget 432 as currently listed in our document with a total uh, personnel and expenses of 229 Is there a second? Second. On discussion? Peter? Aye. Robert? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Kevin? Aye. And the chairman votes aye. So, at what part of the year do we expect, if prime time comes back, we would be opening that program? Because I'd rather not fully fund it if we're not going to fund it for the whole year. I know it's not sustainable and next year we'd have to, but we're in a place where we need to get below a levy limit number. And if we think that the program's not coming back till at least the back half of the year, do we have to fund the whole thing? Or can we leave the, I know it's not, it's not from a planning purposes, it's not the greatest way to do it, but in order to get below the levy limit, you know, we have to make some reductions. And if it's money that's just going to sit out there for six months, then do we let it sit out there for six months? Mr. Hall, and then I'll... Mr. Close. Schweitz, two, two things. One, Dighton is currently still in the red with COVID. So predicting how we're going to be in light of the pandemic, no one really knows yeah, for sure. I know. Could we... We were not sure. We were trying to balance our budget. Is it possible to pull that money and then place it in a situation where you could draw from free cash to get to, you know they're not going to open this July summer. 1st, right. But draw enough money to get to the fall meeting and then revisit this? Yeah, that's, well, that, that, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm asking. I, I, since Mr. Ferry is intimately involved in that, in that program, I would just, your thoughts. I know it's not the optimal way to do it. We'd like to keep it fully funded, but to have cash sitting out there that we may not end up spending, but we may need to put back in the budget in full next year. You know, this is one of those, this is that, I think we talked about it last year. We're, FY22 is gonna be that buffer year that we have to do some things that we don't wanna do but we have to work our way through it. So prime time itself is a revolving fund. I believe what you're, you're budgeting, I don't have a budget refunding, is three full timers. Yep. And then the, the casual programs that we can pull off safely. So the, the my, my, I know it's a prime time is a revolving account, but we budget we do that as an offset to the budget, correct? That's how we do it because it, it's not a self-sustaining revolving account. We usually transfer, we transfer funds from, from prime time as part of the operating budget, right? Chris, is that correct? Uh, uh, Ed, I don't, think we've ever, I don't think we've ever done an offsetting transfer or shown a contribution in from prime time, but let me go back to the excess capacity tab here real quick. Go ahead. Tom. Prime time is the revolving fund. But I think I know what you're saying, and I, I like the opportunity to show up on the pencil on that. And, uh, if after you see your plan, I meet on Tuesday. Yeah. I yeah, it'll be, uh, it's going to be a Zoom meeting Tuesday. Right. Yeah. 
So we are, we are not cur currently showing a contribution from the revolving fund to the general fund right now. So how did we, because we always took money out of prime time for the at annual town meeting. No, that was it, uh, several years ago. Okay. When we moved one of the employees to, to the town side. Yeah. We, we resolved the red issue. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, because right now this, this, uh, this budget is a request of $77,000. That would be a, a raise and appropriate, or is it being all that whole budget was being paid out of yep. prime time? Do you know? The, the three employees, I don't have the sheet in front of me. Yeah. You got three employees that's paid on the town side. Okay. All right. So 542 is budgeted out of the town side. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, to the point that Mr. Hull brought up and I was bringing up, do you foresee, and I know it's a crystal ball, if, if we said we were only gonna fund three quarters of this starting in September, because what, where, what, what are those employees, they're laid off currently? Is it? No. No, no they're no, so they full time. Oh, they are? Yes. Oh, okay, all right, well that changes that whole scenario. Okay, all right, all right. I thought, I thought they were, that we. <laughs> okay, all right, thanks for correcting that. That's, thanks Tom. Appreciate that. All right. Thanks for clarifying. So I would uh, recommend budget 542 as requested. A move. Is there a second? Second. On discussion? All in favor, Catherine? Aye. Peter? Aye. Robert? Kevin. Aye. Uh, yeah. So uh, I will just leave. I, I people know how I feel. I, I totally, I highly support that program, but I think we need to figure out where we're going to go going forward with it, from a COVID standpoint, a liability standpoint to the town, um, because of the pandemic. So, and you know, I know it affects people's lives, but. Uh, I leave it in the hands of the leaders of the town that you really have to take a hard look at it and um, in consultation with Board of Health and the state on what they <coughs> are looking at at programs like this are, is, is, is our state health department going to recommend that towns still run programs like this or is that something that they, they want to see the private sector running so I think we have to we as a town we know how valuable the program is I please don't anybody take it any other way than that, but I think from a moving forward, the town has to uh, understand what its role in a program such as that um, should be. Yeah, I'm supporting it at this time, uh, but I do agree with you that we have to look at what the other state th thinks yeah. about this and the Board of Health and other I considerations. Think it's something that's gonna, it's gonna, and, and it's one of those, you can't let it linger too long because then it, you, you know, you, you put yourself in an unsustainable position, so. Yeah, so thank you. All right, we're getting closer. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I may, we skipped over departments 433, waste collection and disposal in oh. 491 Cemetery. How did I miss? Oh, I missed the whole Board of Health. Oh, prime the tap the tap had been moved I, I, I missed the whole Board of Health, sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> Thanks. I was going to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I went, wait, I went straight from stormwater to prime time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that worksheet was out of order, so it, it got moved. So, waste collection. All right, any questions on waste collection? I, it doesn't look like there's anything different between the department request, the Board of Selectmen's recommendation. Any questions of the committee? I know we had long discussion with uh with, the, with mr pius about this uh earlier in uh in our session so um the the increases are based on what they expect the um uh, increases from our haulers and and our disposal fees 
Just the, the those those were double checked. Smoothish, right? Those were double checked. Uh... Yes, I did actually reach out um, to the board of health um, about fifty two ninety four. 5294, um, I indicated that I wanted to get confirmation um, that um, that the actual decrease year over year uh, was accurate. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I, I didn't receive confirmation, so I would take that to be uh, no news is good news. So that's on 5294, the request is 20,000. Oh, yeah, that's the one. I, I have a question on that one because the the request is twenty thousand. We've only no, no, one line. Uh, um, actually, it looks like there are two fifty two ninety fours in there right now. There's a problem with the account numbering sequence. Something's not not something's not identified correctly. So that the hazmat disposal line, Chris. Yeah, yeah that should be. It should yeah. have a different account number. Exactly what that is, I'm not sure. Right. All right, but the spend on that has been. Five fifty five hundred and seventy three hundred, and the department request is twenty thousand. I think they're anticipating a second hazmat disposal day for the for the uh, community. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend that we reduce that line, whichever budget number that that comes mm -hmm. to, Chris. That, yeah, that, that number can't be corrected yeah, right now. Whatever number that else. the hazmat disposal line be reduced to a recommendation of tw of ten thousand. We've spent seven and five over the last two years. Um, that, you know, uh, it's going to take it back down to five, but I, if they're trying to run a second disposal because of yep. the delays in last year's, we'll leave some additional funding in there. The committee okay with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that, 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 so the recommendation on 433 three. be, uh, uh, nine thousand two hundred twenty-six seventy-seven in personnel, and seven hundred and thirty thousand forty-one fifty-four in expenses for a total of seven thirty-nine two sixty-eight thirty-one. Is there a motion? No moved. Is there a second? Second. On discussion, Kevin? Aye. Robert? Peter? Aye. Catherine? Aye. And Chairman votes aye. Cemetery. Motion to recommend 491 as requested. So moved. Is there a second? second? On discussion? Peter? Aye. Robert? Kevin? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Chairman votes aye. Board of Health. So on the on the Board of Health budget, um, the uh, the town administrator met with Mr. Pius and then Mr. Pius met with Mr. Pilling. Um, and the, we're going to re recommend reducing the health agent number back to 55794.17, which was the original request, um, based on that if we make any changes to it now, it will affect our CARES Act funding. And in the meantime, the uh, Board of Selectmen and the Town Administrator will meet with the health agent to address the the funding concerns to take another look at it in the fall but we don't want to affect if we if we made changes to it and increase the number in our uh, fy 20 budget we would basically be taking away 15 to twenty thousand dollars that we could get reimbursed out of out of cares funding so um, at this point we want to bring it back to that same requested number correct yes Mr. Administrator? yes the board of selectmen agree so yes. um so the 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 new number that we would be voting is if the formulas work right chris yeah the formula's right 60 okay. the total should be 63 7 21 33. that's correct that's correct 
So I would uh, recommend that uh, Board of Health Regulations and Expenses, uh, account number 510, be a total of 63-721-33. So moved. Is there a second? Second. On discussion? Catherine? Aye. Peter? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Robert? Chairman votes aye. Board of Health Administration. Such a slow process tonight. I don't know, Pete, was it this slow when we did the Zoom last year? I don't think so. <laughs> Just seems <laughs> like it's moving at a snail's pace tonight. Like it's exactly. everything. Last year was easier than this year. <laughs> yeah, last year we probably had more money. <laughs> so what is the difference between the TA's recommendation and the department request? It's the stipend. The stipend increase. Yeah, one and two. Well, one and one and two. Is the, is the nurse not a stipend? No, um, she gets an hourly rate. I, don't, I, I think she's limited to the number of hours that she works every month. Okay. Oh, here, yeah. So we will reduce the 2% back to 4650. So basically, the Board of Selectmen's recommendations and the TA recommendations include the reduction in the uh, Departmental request. Yeah, I, I wish we wouldn't change the departmental request. Yeah, I did. I did, but sorry about that, Chris. So the I would recommend that uh, the um, Board of Health Administration 519 be 69186.25 in personnel expenses and 4,900 in expenses for a total of 74,086.25. You can move those back if you wanted, Chris, so they show the right department request. But our, okay. vote, our vote will be 74,086.25. Okay. Is there a motion to recommend? I'll move. Is there a second? Second. On discussion? Kevin? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Peter? Aye. Robert? I don't know if he's still with us. The chairman votes yes. Council on Aging. Oh, sorry. Yeah, is that, is that when we are Council on Aging? Yes, 541. So another, what, what, Oh, we're not running, obviously, any Council on Aging programs currently, are we? That's, that's the difference of prime time. Council of Aging has those three employees on it. Okay. So a motion to follow the department request on Council on Aging. Can I ask you one question? Sure. Um... The professional and technical and the communications, that's both a good number. Yeah, so, um, so Tom, the 8,300 on um, professional and technical, that was the same as this year's budget, but um, last year we only spent 4,300. And the same, but the prior year we spent 7,800. Did we have outside services in 19 that we didn't have in 20? And this year we've only spent 3,800. Right, yeah, the, the, the classes that we used to held at uh, Lincoln Village. That's where we can sharpen a pencil again. So they're recommending 8,000? They were asking for 8,300. They spent 4,300 last year, and year to date, they've only spent 3,800. Right. So can we take that down to 5,000? That, that's where we can make 
the difference because of COVID, like you're saying. Okay. That, that's where we'd be All right. So that's so we'll recommend five thousand in that in the first line, and then communications. Yeah, it's been pretty right. close to that seventy five hundred to seven thousand. I don't know if there's a lot we could take out of that one, Kevin. No, there's not. There, yeah. There's not. If anything, it would be about five hundred bucks. I was yeah. thinking between the two, maybe five and five. But you know, if you want to take it down to it's a good point, though. your recommendation, that's fine too. Yeah. Uh, how about the equipment, fifty-eight fifty? Another five hundred there or something? No, there's a thousand. Yes. Down uh, line twenty-one, down towards the the last line in the expenses. Oh, additional People, equipment. Yeah, additional yeah. equipment. That's that's there for trying to rotate the computers. Okay. Oh, to buy a new computer each right. year. All right, so why don't we reduce line 5,300 to a recommendation of 5,000 from 8,300? Yep. And then line um, 5,340 to 7,500 from 8,000. Mike, can I have a copy of those numbers so I can negotiate with Dallas? So that would reduce the... Chris, I'm going to change those just for a second if you want to change them back just so I have a number in front of me. All right. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I love these live documents. So the uh, Department 541 COA will be 85434.60 on uh, uh, personnel and 16225.00 on expenses for a total of 101659 It's a motion. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> on discussion? Peter? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Kathy? I don't know if Robert's back, but Robert. Okay. Uh, veterans. So what is the difference between the TA's recommendation and the... Yes, so um, the, uh, the TA recommendation, which... Uh, actually should become the board recommendation as well. Uh, the number, hours. The, yeah, the number of hours in the veterans, um, the veterans agent have been reduced uh, with a, um, you will see there is, um, I thought at the time we did put um, $2,000, I'm actually, back in for additional hours um, that sh should go, I recommend going to 5131, uh, but it's still a reduction from where we were. I thought I had that in there at one point. Yes. All right, so I would recommend that the veterans be forty one thousand one forty four seventy six in personnel expenses and eighty five thousand eight twenty five in expenses for a total of one twenty six nine sixty nine seventy six. So moved. So moved and seconded on discussion. Catherine? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Peter? Aye. The chairman votes aye. Commission on Disabilities. So, Mr. Gale, I'll give you a couple of minutes. I know you sent us all an email earlier today. Um, as as you know, we are we there are some differing philosophies as it relates to this, um, but we're going to give you an opportunity to speak on it again before we get into our discussion on it. If you... 
sure, uh, I, the best place for people to hear. So I don't know, where's the best place for? Podium. Um, can you guys, let me just make sure, can you guys hear him? Can you hear me on Zoom? Okay, a little bit. I can speak louder, I can really scream if I need to. Do you want to take this over there? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. We'll take it as far over as we can. There we go. There you go. Okay. Is that better? Can you hear me now? That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. There you go. The floor is yours, Mr. Gill. Okay, so let me, let me first address a, a couple of the questions that you brought up when we had our last conversation. And that was, you wanted information about the job description and who the coordinator would be responsible to be an answerable to, which is a very fair question. So the town administrator on, and I have met on that issue. And um, what we have determined at this point is that it makes sense for the ADA coordinator to be directly answerable to and reported to and take direction from the town administrator. We haven't yet determined the specific details of the job description, which itself is extensive in terms of what would be the priority goals and objectives because we feel that right now there's just so many other things going on. We can't sit down and do that until after the town meeting. But we have determined that, that that responsible person would be answerable directly to him and of course to the Board of Selectmen as well and take direction from at the same time. The part of the reason for that is because the responsibility of that role transcends so many different things in town and you're working with the town departments, you're working with the, the residents, you're working with many, many different organizations and aspects of, of the town that involve ADA. So it's not just a simple, you know, one size fits all. In terms of the question about whether a volunteer can do this or not, and that's, that was also brought up at the last meeting, one of the documents that I provided to you today, and I'm sorry they were late, but I was asked to provide these documents just within the last day or so, um, and I put them together along with the documents that I had previously sent to all of you folks last week, which was the job, job description, bylaws, et cetera. So the documents that you got today, one of the documents makes reference to volunteers doing this work as the ADA coordinator. The state requires that if the town has at least 50 employees, the coordinator has to be a person who's potentially considered a town employee. Part-time, full-time stipend isn't determined, but they cannot be a volunteer. And that's by, by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts' own standards and the Mass uh, Office of Disability. So a lot of reasons for that are because of the nature, again, of the work that's done, the qualifications, the criteria, um, and also because of HIPAA and the HIPAA regulations will not allow for a volunteer to have private information and contact with residents on certain specific issues. So that's one of those reasons for that. And again, the town does have over 50 employees. With regard to the uh, dollar figures, and I know it was suggested separately that potentially a current town employee could take over the responsibility and do some of this work, or do the work. So what I will say to that is I'm just gonna give you a simple Quick example, if you have a town employee who is currently paid, just, let's just say, let's take a low figure, $60,000, but the total cost for that town employee of all that's provided for that employee includes everything is eighty to $90,000. If the employee is putting in 10 hours a week, unless the employee asks for a raise, then you're spending twenty to $22,000 of that employee's salary time to do this same work. Not only that, it's been suggested that certain town employees can do this work because they're capable of doing it. And I think from the documents that I sent you last week, along with the documents that I provided today, what you'll see is that only a small amount overall, a relatively small amount, is directly related to some of the things that the public sees, for example, buildings and, buildings and grounds those types of things. That's a fairly small percentage of what's actually done. Most of the work is done behind the scenes. Most of the work doesn't just relate to everything Title II, which is everything public. It also relates to Title I, which means, for example, uh, Mr. Chairman, as, a member, as the chairperson of your particular committee, if you had a problem with your back and you needed a special 
device for the chair or you needed a brace or anything, you would be contacting the ADA coordinator in the town to make those arrangements for that special equipment. So that's, it's, Title I covers everything employee in terms of employee relations and services and resources and potentially EAP or employment assist, employee assistance aspects of this as well. Um, Title III, Title III is also another aspect of this. Title III is a relationship for public-private partnerships and that's for the businesses in town, for whether a business has an issue or a complaint or a resident has an issue, complaint about a business and how that transcends across the relationship with public-private partnerships. So those are just some of the other aspects that are covered. Lastly, what I'll say is this also covers the Section 504 and 508 Code of the 21st Century Communications Act. That means assuring and working to make every aspect of communications in this town 100% accessible, from reaching the fire department and the police department and the training involved for the officers to communicate with residents as first responders, to the technology that they use, making sure it's in place and that it's brought up to standard, making sure that the website is fully accessible, making sure that all the email addresses are fully accessible and fully kept up to code. So those are just some of the aspects of what the position requires. What we proposed initially is that 15,000, I'm almost done by the way, <laughs> that $15,600 figure for the cost for the coordinator directly. Myself and another member of the um, commission met with uh, the, the town administrator and we agreed, I mean, it's NASCA slipping, sorry, on a figure of, of $8,000 for the coordinator's um, cost, salary, whatever you want to couch it as at this, at this point. I know that there was a figure put out there of $3,000. That $3,000 figure, just for absolute clarification, was a figure that was put on as a placeholder only, and that wasn't really clear in the last conversation we had. That was a placeholder that was put in by the acting town administrator before we had a chance to sit down with the, the new town administrator, you know, because he wasn't in place yet. So that was where that came about as that, as that figure, $3,000 figure. I understand that because of the constraints of the town at this point, you don't wanna potentially consider funding the $8,000, which from my perspective would be very fair. However, what's also fair, and I ask you to consider, is potentially funding this for $6,000 with the potential, and I'm gonna put that word in, in quotes, if you will, or brackets or whatever, with the potential for the additional $2,000 at special meeting based on the work that the town administrator and I do to ferret out more of what's involved and, and how we're gonna go about the job description. There's already a lot of work being done, and you'll see that when the town report comes out. We submitted that today. You'll see how much work not only is being done by the commission, but how much separate work the coordinator has to put in for resource and time to get everything accomplished that needs to be accomplished. So again, we're proposing and asking that you fund this for the $6,000 figure for that part of it at this point. I know there's other aspects of it, but also that you consider the other 2,000 to be held in abeyance, if you will, or revisited for the town meeting in November. So I don't know if anyone else has anything to add, um, if there's anybody in line or the Board of Selectmen or anything like that, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman. One second. I just want to ask the committee for its length. Any members of the committee have any questions to Mr. Gale? No. Mr. Roach? My only question is who's, who's in the committee now? I couldn't. Could you repeat the question, please? Sir? To, who's on the commission currently? You mean the names? Yeah, yeah the members of the commission. Um, uh, even just numbers is fine. I don't how how many people okay. are on the commission? There, I'm the, I am the coordinator. The, there are a total of five members of the commission currently. We're looking for two more good people who are interested, caring, and, and want to serve. So we are, can be a number of seven. So we have five members of the commission who are volunteers. One of them is not a voting member because they're the liaison to the Board of Selectmen. That would be you, Ken. That, that's me. One of those five? Yes. One of, the, one of those five, Mr. Gale? We, yeah, we, yes, uh, Mr. Pacheco is the liaison. He is not a voting member. And then beyond that, we have five other people. Oh, five other. So there's yes, a yeah, total so of six. Yeah, five so with members. With, with, with Mr. Pacheco and Mr. Gale, it's a total of seven people. No, no, no. Five is including Mr. Gale. Okay. I'm a non voting okay. member. 
So that makes it six, okay. but I'm six, not going to Six, correct. Okay. Okay. Is that it, Pete? Yes. Okay. Catherine, do you have anything? No. Right, uh, Kevin, I asked you. Mr. Hall? I'm, I'm good. Okay, Mr. Hall. Thank you. I've heard a great deal about the importance of the ADA coordinator position. These discussions have gone on since early February. But my concern is not so much how important that position is, but how much the town can afford for that position. Tonight, a compromise proposal for the ADA coordinator was put forth, $6,000 to be voted at the June town meeting, with the possibility of an increase of 2,000 more at the special town meeting in the fall. Once we have validated and formalized the AD coordinator's position with the town administrator, we'll have a better idea of how much free cash is available for a further discussion at the fall town meeting. What concerns me the most is that the American Disability Act came into existence in the 1990s, yet there are still town properties that are not ADA compliant, most notably the library, which currently is closed to the public. ADA is federal law. It is hypocrisy for the town to direct the billing department or the Board of Health or the Conservation Commission to tell its residents that they must follow local, state, and federal laws. Yet it is okay for the town government not to follow the law, even when the violation creates barriers for some of its citizens who have a right to equal access. Some have said that the building inspector, DPW director, can handle the matter of ADA compliance. I have great respect for both men. But if they could handle ADA compliance along with their already very heavy workload, why is the library closed to the public and there are still other ADA compliance issues that this town has over 25 years failed to address? Mr. Gales has made impressive inroads on several ADA issues to date, including grant writing, grant implementation, as well as sidewalk compliance, curb cuts, and work with town playground compliance issues. I've also been told that Mr. Gales has been asked to advise and consult with the Board of Health and the school department on ADA issues going forward. In closing, I would respectfully request that the FinCom give the compromised budgetary request for the ADA coordinator's position serious consideration. I was not a member of the Board of Selectmen when their $8,000 recommendation was made, and I question whether that request would be supported at the June town meeting. I do believe that giving Mr. Gales $6,000 now with the possibility of an additional 2000 at the fall town meeting is a more responsible decision, especially since we have a better awareness, or we will have a better awareness of how much free cash will be available in the, during the fall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Can I, sure. uh, can I add then? Ditto to both uh, comments from uh, the ADA as well as my uh, colleague on the board, but if the, uh, FinCom has had the opportunity to read the KMA report. You realize how many things that we have to uh, fix in town. And all during this time, we've had other people that could have probably contributed to the doing it correctly, but it hasn't been done in, in the, the past. I would ask that we support the, uh, that the FinCom support the compromise. And I, I support all the work that uh, the commission as well as the ADA coordinator has done. He, uh, Without mentioning names, but the ADA quarter is the one that has the knowledge that presents these ideas to the Commission on Disability. We had our meeting today. I can't come up with this stuff. It's the knowledge that this person, our ADA coordinator, has, and I think it warrants uh, the compromise that we've discussed uh, tonight. Okay. So thank you, uh, Mr. Thank, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tico. So uh, I just want to, uh, if I can have the speaker back so people yep. can hear me. Yep. <clears throat> thank you. I want to bring a little historical perspective from Mr. Hall's edification on this that 
I want to take it back to last year and the year before's town meetings that the, uh, the money for this was not funded in last year's town meeting. It was funded at a special town meeting. The voters of the town did not vote to fund this at a full annual town meeting. The recommendation last year was not for a lot of reasons. And, and I, I don't, this is not about a person. This is about how the town handles its responsibility of ADA. And it's fine to say that the building inspector doesn't have the time, but you know what? They are the people who implement the things that the ADA per personnel, whether it be Mr. Gale, the town administrator, or someone else. So it is our departments that are, that are responsible for implementation of any ADA, and this is a, this is a bigger picture, to, to all of the documents that Mr. Gale sent to us and we've reviewed over the last two years. This is more of how do we administer our ADA, not about how the problems that we have, because the problems existed before, during it, and after. And let's, be, let's understand that a lot that went into the creation of that report came through the town administrator and the previous town administrator and the town administrator's office. So I personally believe that the ADA function should fall under the town administrator's office and the town administrator should be the ADA coordinator as part of their responsibility. What the Commission on Disabilities does is they work with whoever we assign as that ADA coordinator. And if you go to the multitude of communities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, they do not have a separate assigned employee. It is a member of their departments or one of their departments, whether it be the town manager, the town administrator, the building inspector, that is how it is coordinated. It is not coordinated by assigning an outside individual as a special town employee to strictly be their ADA coordinator. And that, it's about the implementation, not about what the town lacks in ADA. We know, we understand that. And if it was something that had been assigned to a board of selectmen over, the, over many, many years as a assignment, they are the, considered the ADA coordinator and things weren't implemented, weren't updated over those times, that falls on the, on the board of selectmen as the leaders on how they implemented programs of ADA over time. The issue has been brought to the forefront. The town voted $2,000. We are in a significant budget crunch. The compromise to $6,000 doesn't address the additional $8,800 that's requested as supplemental expenses. You're talking about taking a budget that was $2,000 to, even if you left it at $6,000, that was $2,000 to $14,000 in, in a time and a budget that we don't have the funding to do that. And I think it, 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 we, we are not shirking a responsibility by not assigning this as an administrative duty of the town administrator where the implementations of the grant that we got back can be utilized by the members of the, of the uh, Commission on Disabilities in their role as well as the building inspector, the highway superintendent on separate funding that has to go into paying to address the sidewalk issues or paying to, accept, to update the library issue so it makes it accessible. It's not about those programs, it's about how we administer our ADA. So I don't know if the town administrator has anything he wants to add because I know the previous town administrator had her feelings on it and her thoughts on it and those were expressed last year. So I, I'd like to ask the town administrator for his thoughts on that. No, and I understand all, all views here. Um, I also understand and have a um, and have an idea, um, you know, how other, oh, you know, how how other communities are structured in terms of ADA um, accessibility, and uh, frankly, the catch up um, that all communities have been doing in recent years, um, and thankfully, the state um, has been. Um, I think more helpful than it has been in helping cities and towns really meet those needs as well. Uh, the accessibility and ADA grants have uh, been helpful and um, thankfully many towns um, have been taking advantage of them to move forward and um, actually into the future. So I don't think we're alone um, in addressing um, a lot of the needs uh, that we have. Um, 
I think it's evident and emblematic, uh, like in communities throughout the Commonwealth. One of the things in terms of uh, like actually really defining this role, like uh, Mr. Gill is right, um, he's correct in that the fact uh, that we did have a conversation about, uh, oh, you know, I mean, right now there are a lot of unknowns or there's a lot of, oh, you know, oh, you know, misunderstandings, I guess, about what, uh, you know, the current ADA coordinator is doing, how that's interface, how that role is interfacing with, uh, like, residents, other town departments. Uh, oh, and if, oh, and as we go forward, one of the things that I really wanted to do is try to better define how we go forward uh, with goals, with a plan, uh, you know, so everyone really had uh, was um, had information about how we were going forward, um, and I, under I understand the board of selectmen's, um, oh, you know, their position, and I also understand the finance uh, committees, uh, you know, their questions that they've been asking as well. So, uh, you know, frankly, uh, I'm here to serve. However, the town wants to move forward. Um, that's what I do, and I can, uh, you know, deal, and I can work, and I can work with anybody to do what we, I have to do as a town. And the same to that as has been in the past. If we don't recommend it, and, and the board of selectmen has their, their view on it, that the townspeople will have the opportunity at town meeting to make the final determination of, of where it goes forward. And you know, that is that's. My opinion on it, I haven't changed my stance on it in two years. Um, I just think that the, the request at this point where we stand in, the townspeople did vote the $2,000 in last year's, uh, last year's special town meeting. That was not the recommendation of the finance committee. So that ability, does, that ability is there. I, I will throw it out to the finance committee on what they, the feeling of a recommendation is on this one. But, my, my recommendation at this point would be to put no increase in this budget and, and, uh, and, and see where it, uh, the request falls. The Board of Selectmen addressed only a $2,000 compromise. There was no additional compromise to a requested budget that is eight times what it was last year. So, um, you know, we, the financial situation that we're in, we have much harder cuts that are gonna come up as we get for as we start to close this out, so I I, I stand by um, my my words, and I'll, I'll open it up to the committee, and then we'll uh, make a recommendation from them. Yeah, and if I could, just, I've got two two things for you. Yeah. I one just just to start off, you know, we've we're level funded for the last however many years stipends, and so you know, when we were at annual town meeting, I want to, I, we were either at a 500 or a thousand dollar stipend that got moved to 2000 special town meeting, the smaller, smaller number of residents, but still it passed at the 2000, but then we're going to increase that by four times to 8,000. That alone when we're freezing stipends. Uh, but then just, I guess, to the overall standpoint, you know, the, the town's been built on, uh, you know, people who spend a lot of time volunteering their time. I'm, I'm going to quote volunteering because uh, Stormwater, uh, I mean, Veteran Services, there's many volunteers in there, uh, the, the library, Parks and our department. Everyone in this town that helps out is doing it for the betterment of the town. And yeah, we spend a lot of time. Everyone in this town spends a lot of time, a lot of hours. Um, we paid everyone what what their time was worth, uh, we'd have a budget the size of Taunton. So that, that's my two two cents there that we're we're increasing the stipend in times when we've tried to keep for at least the last number of years stipends at, at level funding, and then the same as far as the overall expenses. I mean, I understand that there's a lot of work, but there's a lot of departments in this town that do a lot of work. Um, and, and that, that's all I've got. Mr. Pacheco? Yeah, if I can just add, the Board of Selectmen did reduce the budget 
uh, the professional and technical from 3,500 to $1,000. So we did make a recommendation that, that the budget be reduced and now uh, with the compromise that's been suggested, we would also be reducing the budget by $2,000. So my question is, what budget will be going before the, you know, depending upon what you're recommending, what budget actually goes before the town the, residents? The departmental request. Okay. That, and and that, if it's rejected, what happens? So here, so what happens is, just so people understand, the departmental request will be in the warrant. That's what's in the warrant. The motion, which is read, which the motions that are on the floor are the finance committee's recommendations. So. Let's say, for example, if we recommended $5,000 on this, the motion would be $5,000, however split up between personnel and expenses. At any time after that, anyone can stand up and make a motion to amend, uh, to amend it. Because the, in the past with our moderator, as long as that departmental request is in there, the, the amendment can go up to whatever the departmental request is. If the departmental request was lower, the moderator would not let it go above what the departmental request was. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, no problem. Does can anybody have any questions on that? Is that clear? Can I just understand that yeah. if the original departmental request will be in the warrant? That, that, will be that will be in the warrant. That is the top number that the moderator would allow any amendment to go to. And that would be the original request that was sent to you. Is that right? The, yeah, that's a total of $16,820. So it was eight thousand on um, um, salary Actually, I think, personnel I think, and eighty-eight right. twenty on. I'm straining my eyes right now. I thought it was four, fourteen something. Just to for clarification. No, the original request, the original departmental request was for sixteen thousand eight twenty. So. And just to give a date, we still have three hundred forty thousand dollars to go. I don't know if there's any members of the Commission on Disability online or not. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask that question, Mr. Gill. Is there anyone who would, anyone in the, in the public forum that would like to um, add their comments? I know there's been some chat. If, if people who are chatting would like to share their words, they, uh, I will give them the floor and the opportunity. Um, Mrs. Gulak? Yes. Um, Welcome, uh, Nancy. Thank you. Um, I spoke at the last meeting, and I'm the one that talked about volunteering. I also know that in the past, we've had volunteers who were employees appointed to positions, and although those positions had a monetary value to them, they turned around and donated that money back to the town. So that took care of being a paid employee, because once you're paid, you determine what you do with the money. And there were members of the finance committee that had to do that. I think you probably know who I'm talking about. So as far as being an employee versus a volunteer, yeah, we know there's a way around that. I want to address the fact that uh, the statement about uh, the library not being in compliance over the past 25 years. Well, first of all, we had at least two library proposals to build a library. The first one passed the initial vote it got defeated at the funding source. We couldn't get the uh, debt exclusion. The second attempt to do something with the library was a new architect architectural design that quite frankly was so ugly it didn't go before the public. So the town of Dighton has not ignored the library and we are still actively trying to get a library. That's why we're on the list. Now, as far as making things compliant, uh, I can tell you for the past 20 years, and those of you I served with, either as a member of the finance committee or as a selectman, money was the issue. Every time a issue arose, yes, we addressed it. We did not ignore anything. Did we go out surveying our buildings and our properties saying, oh, we got to do this, this, and this? No, we didn't because we didn't have the funding. It's fine to say we should have done it over the past 25 years, but I can tell you what issues arose over the past 20 years, at least, that I've been involved were addressed. <clears throat> Most notably, other than when 
specifically the sewer department and lower level of town hall was brought to me by a federal official, which we addressed. I can tell you every construction project relative to streets and sidewalks that were done during a period of time. And my, my experience with that started in 2006 with the Berkeley Dighton Bridge. I can tell you every project that has been completed in this town has been compliant because Mr. Ferry knows exactly what to do. And I'm not, I'm not trying to take anything away from anybody, but I'm pointing out to, I hope the people of this town to realize that over the past 25 years, since that's the time period that was quoted, this town has done due diligence as best it could within the money that was available. And I will also point out another department that is very involved with helping individuals with handicap. And that's the Council on Aging, because I have personal experience with them helping when my husband had surgery. And they, I went to them, they helped me. And so there's a lot of uh, departments in town that we don't think about. When this came before the Board of Selectmen, I supported, and I was the only selectman that supported the town administrator's proposal, uh, which was a $3,000 uh, stipend to the ADA coordinator. And I said at the time, you're gonna have a tough time getting that because you you know, it, you were lucky that they, they got what they got last year. But I just want people to know, we have not been sitting back for 20 or 25 years, not doing a thing. And if you look around at the streets and sidewalks and starting with the Berkeley Dighton Bridge, you're going to see ADA compliance everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Goulart. Um, is it, let's see. Yep, yeah, Mr. Smith. Floor is yours. All right. I'm going to speak as briefly as I possibly can about this um, and from a different perspective because. And I won't disagree that there have been steps that have been made to make the town more compliant and some projects have been done correctly. So the reason why I got involved in the things that I'm involved in is because I'm a parent of a child who uses a wheelchair. There are so many locations throughout this town, especially the library, which I understand that attempts have been made, but I've watched my wife carry my child who was 50 pounds plus to the bottom level for the children's area of the library. There's so much work that needs to be done on this subject. And the, the work that needs to be done is so much easier, easy, easier to address if we have someone in an ADA coordinator position who is an expert on the subject. We can take guesses, we can meet minimum requirements, but sometimes minimum requirements aren't good enough when you're the person who's living in the situation where you have to care for a child in, in a town like this, which is so inaccessible that it's not funny. Um, this, I just want to make the emphasis that we may think that things have been done right, but there's so much more that needs to be done. And I think a qualified person in an ADA coordinator position is so invaluable that $6,000 is an extremely small ask. So, and don't take this the wrong way, Mr. Smith, but I'm going to say is we have all of the things that need to be done and we have a limited pot of, pot of money. If, if necessary, would you, would, and I, and I throw this to you. I know 6,000 doesn't sound like a lot, but if that 6,000 was able to be used to do X project that addresses an ADA issue, would it be better spent that way or better spent to have, to, to, to pay an employee? That, and, and I, you know, I, I'm not, you don't have to answer that, but I'm just saying that I, that's I the like situation to, that we're in. No, I would like to answer that if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Because I feel like, and it, and, it, and it is dependent on how qualified the person is in that position, because I feel like someone who has the proper qualifications, like CAM certification, can save the town money by not wasting time um, investigating, um, you know, problems because he has the answers so i think there's a certain there's a value both ways like i can agree with that that yeah six thousand dollars would be nice but if the ada co coordinator can save you ten thousand dollars in engineering fees or time spent researching a, a project it, it pays for itself but i i my the the i step back to that's the reason that 
we supported doing the matching grant to do the um, evaluation and get the evaluation done so we would have those necessary things identified so you can then backfill by funding them to get them completed. And, and that's, you know, we, we, we had that study done for that purpose. I think it's just, it, it's um, a matter of how we implement it versus, and how we um, identify the management of it versus. Um, well, and I think that's where the problem lies with any type of position is if you're not properly, if you don't have someone in place who's properly policing the work being done, then all of that goes to all that money spent in engineering and research goes to the wayside anyway. Yeah. Just, just for clarification, yeah. just for clarification, I don't believe yeah, that was Kevin. You all set? I just want to give. I didn't want to give the floor away if he was. Yeah, just for clarification, I don't believe that that was a matching grant. That was a grant that a former town administrator, sure. as well okay. as the ADA coordinator, got thirty thousand dollars for true. the town. It wasn't a matching grant. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. So uh, uh, our, uh, one second, Mr. Gale. Our librarian, uh, head of the library would like to speak. Jocelyn, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I, I just only wanted to add um, that compliance as far as ADA con is concerned is rather big um, and I knew that going in, I, I am the member of the um, Commission on Disability, and I knew that going in. Um, I joined because I work at the library, but um, I, I'm overwhelmed with the amount of work, not just in how it pertains to our promotional materials, but how it pertains to our website, our social media, our communications to the public, um, and how we need to deliver our services and um, resources. And now in the COVID world, where we're all fighting for a spot in Old Town Hall, what does that mean for some of our programming and these are they're real questions and I, I feel like for programs and services that we offer in our town this is a moving target and I, I just I mean I am a member on the mission and that's fine but I just I think as things change I, I think having a knowledgeable resource in town for some of our services and as our population ages and more needs may increase i, I think um if we can find a compromise for funding for this position it may be better served for integration and i, I know it's a not my opinion is not popular in the room. Um, I just, I, I worry about some of the patrons I'm not able to reach, especially because I've lost contact with so many of them. And that concerns me. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I, this isn't, that's my story and all this. and. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm a, I apologize for rambling, but, you know, I, I see a need in being able to reach people and figure out what they need and how to get it to them. And that is so clear during the pandemic. Thank you. Thanks, Jocelyn. Does anyone else like to speak? So. Can I? Sure, Mr. Gale, sorry I just, about that. I just want to respond to one, the, the, a question that you asked uh, Mr. Smith, and that was for the expenditure of the $6,000, and what would you rather do? So with regard to that, I just want to give you one simple example of a difference that $6,000 can make. 
when the police station was built, there were front, the front doors of the police station was one of the first things I was asked to look at was the police station overall. And this is before we even had the KMA report done. When I looked at the police station, there were a few things that I noted as the community access monitor needed to be resolved. One of those things was the front doors. Although it's a flat surface to get to the door, the doors were not positioned for the handles to open at the right height, nor to be pushed in and or be pushed out, which was a requirement. But yet, you know, the police station opened. No problem with that. However, through the efforts of me specifically looking at the doors and making some inquiries, we were able to get a donation of, new, of the electric doors, including the installation, which was approximately a $6,000 figure. So I think it was 5,800 or something like that, but it was very close to that same figure you're talking about. And we were able to get the contractor to donate the services and the work to get to finish the doors and do the electrical wiring that needed to be done. So now the police station, the new police station, has the correct doors on it. So that's just one simple example to answer your question. Thank you, Mr. Gale. So, <clears throat> so does Board of Selectmen want to address the expenses portion of, of the request? Sure. The office supplies is, uh, I believe that as a member of the Commission on Disability or a non-voting member, we're going to have a, this year we're going to have a mailing, so that's probably what the office supplies is for. We did reduce the professional and technical, there was a request for 3500 and even though I'm on the Commission on Disability as a non-voting member. I supported reducing it to $1,000. My colleagues on the Commission may not be happy with that, but that's what I did. And other uh, supplies and auxiliary aids, 4320, and that's for assistance for our ADA coordinator to have somebody assist them in preparation uh, for different items. For example, I noted uh, that today that for the agenda, I believe that your assistant that is not being paid by the town at the present time, uh, assisted or helped in preparing the agenda and, and typing in it or whatever she did, but when it comes up, it shows up as her item that she had uh, presented the item. So I think by law, Mr. Uh, Gales can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think by law we have to provide whatever aids any employee needs in town uh, to do their job. So that's why the 43, uh, it's a 4320. I'm just, I can address that last part and I will speak very loudly sure. so that I can be heard over the speakers. But that figure of 4320, yes, that, if those, if that is the cost of the auxiliary assistance that I need, whether it be for a reader, which is what this person is, or technology or resource, or whoever is doing this position, or any position in the town if the person has a disability, a recognized disability and has self-identified, then the town is obligated within reason to meet those expenses. This is within reason for those expenses. And these are expenses that I individually have incurred out of pocket. So can you just explain to us how that figure was ascertained? Sure. That figure was ascertained by looking at the amount of time, the average amount of time that individual has spent working with me. Now, let me explain. They don't type my documents for me, for example. I do my own document work and so forth. But they have to prove things because for a blind person, for example, spell check and grammar check doesn't get everything right. So they have to proof documents, and very often they have to do web research with me, because as much as I can do myself, and I'm a very independent person, a lot of aspects of doing web research and resource information are not fully accessible. Sometimes they have to convert PDF documents to Word because the PDF formatting isn't correct. Other times they have to change graphic information so that I can get it in Word document format. So that's just an example of what the person would, would do for me or if it were another person with a disability and had other technological resources and needs that, that, you know, that person or equipment could be provided. Under Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act, and I think the town administrator is probably aware of this too, the town has a responsibility for any employee or stipend person to provide the resources necessary for that person to do their job to the full, full and best extent possible. So that part of it, is based on a five hour per week aggregate. I pay this person right now $15 an hour, 
to do this work with me. And we took that aggregate times the number of weeks in the year. And as the town administrator and I have spoken to, we can ultimately determine going forward how this person will be paid so it's not my expense, whether they're paid through me, whether I issue the person a 1099, because they're, you know, they're a reader, they're not a union member, there's different criteria for that. They're providing auxiliary assistance to me. If I have to 1099 them, I provide that to the town. If they have to submit timesheets to the town, we will do whatever is necessary to validate the cost. If the cost comes in at 3,700 because we need it to do less, then it will be 3,700. But 4,320 is the aggregate we've done based on the past year. I would have to believe that the town accountant and our auditors would have a way that that would have to be managed. I just that, want you to know yeah, that's, that's yeah, what it's for. Yeah, I, I would think you paying and then yeah. us reimbursing would not be, if you're considered a town employee, right. you would not be taking And I have no objection, and she has no objection if she has to submit time sheets to the town and be paid directly. That's not, So they can work that out. I'm just trying to give you a sense of where this comes from and where the figure is and what the need is. I'm, um, I'm still just struggling with adding an additional $10,000. And I, and I understand providing some um, uh, on, so, that aux, on that auxiliary line, but it, let me, you know, let me let me Let me clarify one thing. If, let's assume, let's keep the $8,000 figure there for a minute. And if we use the $8,000 figure, even if you go down to six and then plus two later, potentially, and that's a potential, I realize that, even if you do the eight, we have the eight plus the 4320, which is 12,320. We have the $1,000 for the auxiliary, you know, for the supplies, et cetera, et cetera. That's, you know, takes you to 13,320. And I think we had a small amount budgeted for other ancillary costs. And this is an example because otherwise it could have to come from just different department budgets and it may not be used. Suppose we, at the town meeting, somebody says that they want to have cart services and sign language services. We have, to, we have to contract for that. We have to pay for it. If I'm told 10 days ahead of time that a resident wants to do it, I have to set up cart and sign language services. To do a town meeting can be anywhere from four to $800. One meeting for the year. If they want to come to this meeting, it could have been four to $800. Because we can't refuse it, it's our responsibility to provide that service. If the person doesn't show up, the money still has to be spent because you've got the resources here to provide it. And that's under state law and state contract with Mass Office of Deaf and Hard of Hearing. That's just one example. Or if we have to put material in Braille, or if we have to make other arrangements for a wheelchair to get into a facility for any reason. So that's the difference in that small amount of a difference, sir. And I understand, I understand that. But uh, from a financial standpoint, and that's what I'm looking at it as, we have asked every department in town to submit a level funded budget with exceptions to contracts, other requests that have come in and we've looked at them as they've come in. I, and, and, I, and I totally understand some of the requests under the, ex, the expenses side. I really struggle on increasing the stipend at this level in a year that we've asked every department to come in with a level funded budget and that we are, you know, you're looking at, it, on the on the uh, auxiliary aids, that we're, we're going to spend two thirds additional of what we spend for our coordinator, and I and I totally understand the necessity of it and the requirement of it, but I, I'm just struggling from a financial standpoint when we've put the constraints on all of our other departments to to level fund it that we have to make a tougher decision than we will we will. Um, uh, compromise from a eight times increase to a six times increase in, in the total budget when in in my my opinion only and pe people can speak to themselves for themselves that setting up an ADA coordinator can be can be a managed by a current town employee my compromise is I will agree to uh, <clears throat> last year's recommending last year's stipend because it was established by the townspeople at that special town meeting. And let's be realistic, we could recommend 2000 and the townspeople could say, well, last year, this was done at special town meeting. We're not happy about that it was done at special town meeting. And at annual, they could say zero, yeah. right? They could, as they did at last annual town meeting. 
but as a compromise, and, and, and I understand putting some money in the ancillary costs and the expenses because of some of the requirements and the things that we have, but I am really going to struggle if the push is to, to fund this at such a much higher level than what we've done for others that, that will not be me as the chairman on my recommendation. If the members of the committee want to have a different recommendation, that would be up to them. But Can I just add about the, I don't want to belabor this. I know it's not getting late. <laughs> <laughs> but at the special town meeting, I made the recommendation that we pay a stipend of $250 a month to the ADA coordinate. There was eight months left, so that would be $2,000. I had assumed that when we came to the annual town meeting uh, that we would then do $3,000 because it's still $250 a month. But what happened, the stipend was actually reduced from $250 a month to $166 and some change uh, per month. I, as a board of selectmen uh, member, because we, of the pandemic and the financial situ situation we were in, I agreed to this $2,000, but I didn't think that that was gonna be a fixed number. I clearly advocated strongly at the special town meeting and they voted to support $250 a month. And at the last FinCom meeting last year, I gave the FinCom the, uh, the Board of Selectmen's meeting where I s recommended that it be $250 a month. I asked people to go on YouTube and I forget how many minutes, but I think it was like 18 minutes into the meeting. You'll hear me mention it to the Board of Selectmen, uh, $250 a month. I wasn't gonna ask for $3,000 in uh, October when there was only eight months left. And yet you, Mr. Chairman, as well as other members, think that I was asking him for $2,000 for a year. And that clearly okay. was not what I was asking for. Okay. Just for clarification, yeah, and Mr. That's, Chairman. And that's fine. And, 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 and that's a reasonable comment. And I, and I, don't, I did not review the YouTube. That's, I'm not questioning that that, that was the case. But $3,000 is not $8,000 or $6,000. No, so, right, so, so we can use that as the example. If that was the request and that was the discussion we had, that's a different discussion than going from $2,000 to $8,000 or $3,000 to, to $6,000. That's a different, that, that is a different discussion and, and, and would be an open discussion to have from a stipend standpoint that it's really not an increase. It was 250, it was just that it was only eight months versus 12. That's, that's, a different, that, that's a different discussion. So I, I'd like to hear, you know, my recommendation would be to level fund and then provide $500 in office supplies, uh, $500 in professional and technical, and $1,000 in the auxiliary aids um, to provide the services that the ADA coordinator would be necessary. And then it, it would be up to the townspeople to determine um, uh, where, they would, where they would like to see that fall. But as a uh, compromise to continue the service that's been started, at, at the rates that were in our level funded budget as we have with other departments and provide some additional services because I understand uh, that you know we have gotten the report back, we have, we have steps that we need to take and the Commission on Disabilities along with its co ADA coordinator do need some funds as the Trails Committee does, as Park and Rec does to provide the service that, that they are required as part of their committee. So that would be my recommendation. Uh, two things just one uh it, yeah just it was my understanding at that special town meeting that that's where we were that it was two thousand dollars for a year but that's besides the point and then just a clarification from chris that if an interpreter were needed at a town meeting that wouldn't come out of this budget that would come out of the town meeting budget wouldn't it are you asking me no he's asking the town account Sorry, Peter, was that question for me? Yeah, if, if, if we needed to hire an interpreter for a town meeting, what would that come out? I am sorry, I have no, I, 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 don't, know if, I don't think I have an answer for you. Okay. I My assumption is that it would be out of either budget. Would that come okay. out of town meeting or would that? We'd actually have a few okay. options. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, Peter, my opinion, I'm sure he's going to answer that. Like in my opinion, we'd have a few options. Uh, we do have a professional and technical line item in the Board of Selectmen's budget as well um, that, that also has a little bit of room for contingencies like all planning and contingencies like that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Hey, Ed. Yes. 
Is that you, Kevin? The numbers that the numbers that you had put together, level fund in it, and then add in uh, for office supplies and professional technical. Uh, what does that bring that number to? So actually, I, I'm going to amend my recommendation just in deference to the chairman of the board of selectmen who said 200, his $250 a month. I, I'm going to take that as the word that that would be the level fund if we had funded it okay, for a full year you. last year. So so I'm going to say $3,000 on the on the on the stipend, and then it would be. 500, 500, and 1,000, so it would be three, four, five thousand dollars total. Five thousand dollars total? Yes. I, I'd like to motion that that's going to be the finance, the, uh, the finance committee's recommendation. Is there a second? Uh, on discussion. Kath, you have anything you want to add? Anyone? So uh, on that motion, Peter? Yes. Kevin? Yes. I don't know if Robert's back. Robert? Take that as silence says no. Uh, Catherine? And the, fine, and the chair votes yes. So that will be our recommendation. And, and as you know, you can feel free to yep. step up at the annual town meeting. Chris, do you have that? You're good with that now, Chris, to plug in? You're on mute, Chris. All right, so at, at this point, we have extended far past where we, and we do have to have another meeting on Tuesday. So um, I'm going to recommend that I just have one other, a couple of things I just want to go over on the um, uh, revenue side, yes. and then we'll take up the additional budgets as well as get the police chief here because that's a large nut in what we need to come up with for Tuesday night, and then we'll f we will definitely finish Tuesday. We got through probably 80% tonight, um, but it, as, it, as we're extending to 9 o'clock, 9.30. Um, uh, I just like to bring it back. So if you can go, Chris, to the revenue page, I just want to make a couple of recommendations. If you can go to that five year um, where you guys did, you took out the um, SOLA and the um, and came up with an average and used 198, I think it was, 100, as our uh, local receipts, the local receipts page. Oh, geez, hold on a second. <laughs> that one, that's, I think that's the page. Oh, I just need to get closer because I'm blind. So on, on the line where we did licenses and permits and we took it down to 178 um, based on taking out those two, big, oh, those, two big, those two big lines. Hold on. I'm trying to make it bigger. Yeah, that's fine. Oh my god, my mouse. Come on, mouse. There we go. So when we took it down to 178, the five-year average and 95%, if you look at our previous years of 226, 242, 306, we know what that 551 en encompassed. I still think we're about $50,000 lower than when. If, if we can look at that projected revenue from 178, make it two. Uh, uh, 25 -ish? Two, yeah, 225-ish. That's and, more than comfortable. Yeah, yeah, and then on the the growth, if we look at our five-year, our, our, our growth number at 225, mm -hmm. I still think that there's probably another twenty-five or $50,000. I'd like to take that from 225 to 250. Okay. Because of, if you look at our average on growth for the yeah. last, I, you know, our, our new growth for the last five years has been uh, something. Stop, 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 stop moving it. Line nine. We, you know, it was 233 I last year. I can see it. We still did have a lot of building this year, but if you take it uh, five years and, and the housing market is crazy, so everything that's being built is being sold. So I'd like to take that to, two, to 250 from 225. Does anybody have any, any questions on that based on a historical? Last year was a softer number, but um, the building permits this year. Uh, in talking to the building inspector have been uh, on the rise for, for, for new growth, so. I think we're safe with that. Yeah. All right, so that, that would pick us up another 75 off of that, is, is off it, of over the levy limit. Is, so you're like, and just uh, like additional clarification, I mean, obviously, I mean, we're always cautious about uh, overextending revenues. Yep. However, uh, the 225 for new growth um, and, and in a conversation with the assessor, and again, I don't want to speak for the assessor, uh, but uh, she thought, uh, like, a, uh, like, 
like we all agreed on the 225, but uh, she actually started at about 270. Oh, uh, and then we worked back to more conservative. Uh, so I think 250 really threads the needle there okay. and could work. Okay, all right. So Pete, as you're uh, doing your um, addition and subtraction, that gives us about another 75,000 in uh, reduction to the over levy limit. Yeah, got it. All right, so if there are any other questions, anyone else? Anything, any, any, any public input that hasn't been added already? I don't know who's still left. <laughs> I'll take the silence as a no. I would move to adjourn the Finance Committee. So moved. Second. Second. Kevin? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Peter? And the chairman aye. votes aye. Thank you very much to everyone. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna ask you would you public input? I just asked for public input and you were silent. I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Oh, Mr. Woods, go ahead. Uh, we, 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 I won't call our motion final. We'll give you a second. Yeah, the audio is a little difficult. A little <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Woods. Uh, you know, I do feel bad about the library, and uh, Josh is doing a great job. And, you know, I'm a member of the CPC, and we're, we're sitting on a lot of money at the CPC, and we would be more than willing to help them any way we can. Uh, I know it needs to be brought up to code. We all need it. No, it needs to be brought up to code. Whether or not that stays a library or not, you know, that's something to talk about in the future. Mm -hmm. But there is money available to do any re renovations at the library. And I appreciate all the hard work that the Finance Committee has done year after year after year. And I understand where you're coming from with all these budgets. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Is there anyone else that didn't hear me before we the motion to adjourn is accepted on the finance committee. I'll turn it over to the board. Yes, of I'll entertain a motion to adjourn for the board of selectmen. So move. I'll step down and second that motion. Any discussion? If not, how do you vote? Uh, selectman Hull? Aye. And Campuchico votes aye also. The meeting is over. Thank you very much.